Are like we recording just, right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. This is good because I I like this. Yeah. Um. I mean, it's his own Superman. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the so the thing about the logo is is I kind of like I was I was I was working on it. I I was thinking about it a little bit. Then um, I opened Canva and then I was like, okay, what I need a picture to to figure that out. Um, and then so I I was trolling to my phone and I saw this one. I was like, huh. That's interesting. Kind of looks like me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of it kind of doesn't, <laughs> but uh, it was weird because I, I just saw it and I I try okay let's let's put it on let's see let's see how it looks like and that's the first design that came out. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's the first one that came out and then I hated every. Those are usually the best. Yeah, well I guess so. Yeah. You know you go through a hundred and you're like all right number one. <laughs> <laughs> but I hated I hated every every everyone else after. And this one, I was like, huh. I was intrigued. I was like, it's just flashy. It's nice. Um, I look like a fucking douchebag, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's that okay, was man. that was the reaction of uh, your friends and family will like it. Don't worry. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> my mom, my mom hated your mom. it. My mom oh, hated I thought it your mom me. might like it. No, 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 no. She didn't like it at all. Uh. But uh, but yeah, my friend uh, told me like I lo- I looked like a douchebag. But I was like, well, that's it's cool because it's it's kind of a joke because I'm maybe I look like a douchebag, maybe I am, but like I don't think I I don't think I am one. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, if, if if you listen for a couple of hours, maybe I guess you're gonna see what you're gonna see. But hopefully, I don't come out. He's just hating, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hate. But <laughs> but enough with uh, with the logo because I was was fucking curious about this discussion with you because. Um, your job is wild to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's so different. It's different. It's so, unique. So what do you do? Like, All right. how well, does that work? I do a few things, you know. I, um, but my main business is inspections. So I do inspections for the construction of hospitals. Yeah. And um, I built up a pretty good company. Um, I mean, I started it with something in mind, you know, like uh, I worked for a couple other companies before that kind of learn from them and really what i figured out is like once you can kind of start doing the business and understanding the business and then feeling like you can do the business better than them then you should be on your own you know so that's what i did i worked for mm, i worked for one company about four years almost four years and um, when, when was that um so well, to start off, like, I was in construction, you know. Like, yeah. what am I going to do? I'm going to do construction, <laughs> right? Well, I guess that's a that's a frat boy um, option, right? It's a good one. Yeah. It's, if mean, you, it's a frat boy option. If you want to get rich, you go construction. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I know it's true. I have friends that went right there. Yeah. yeah. And then I almost went right there as well because I had a painting company when I was in college. Oh, okay. Yeah. How'd that work out? Um, it was good. It was good. It was uh, it was a student painting company, and I did that for a couple of years um, when I was in college, when I was playing football. But then I had to stop doing both because it was just too much work. Mm. And um, so I decided to go like go out, work on my business, and try to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, first, I didn't because I you know I didn't know what what was wor- what working was. Uh-huh. So like I just thought like okay like shit's gonna happen. And then I'm gonna be rich, <laughs> right? I don't have to. I don't have to it's do shit. Idea. I don't have to do anything <laughs> different. And then right. everything's gonna work out, and 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 uh, I'm gonna be rich. And it turns yeah. out, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So so after after that, I had to grind, and I was like doing door to door marketing to get leads to to paint people's like porch. So you're just um, knocking doors. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. That's and a then good business. Well, it's you good. You sell. I mean, you can do and, anything. And um, so I started to do that. Then I was hiring um, high school kids to work, to do door-to-door for me. Mm-hmm. At some point, I had 15 or 20 kids doing door-to-door. Nice. Um, and I was paying them, like, $15 for, like, a name and email of people that wanted to, that wanted to have, like, a paint job during the summer. So I was calling those people at night, and I was booking estimate. In the oh. weekend, so you didn't just pay them on commission. You also paid them just for yeah signing things up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. And then uh, and then during the summer, I was 
hiring, uh, you know, like, again, high school kids, college kids to do my projects. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, they got to have some money. You yeah, know, they're, they're I know. Going to school, so. I know. And uh, the cool thing is I, I, um, I had, like, 10, uh, you know, at some point, like, close to... Like two teams of painter, two or three teams of painter, like two two guys, three guys per team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. The uh, second year, I did a hundred and something thousand, and uh, the last the last year that I did it was um, close to one hundred fifty or or or, or one eighty k in revenue. Just gross. Yeah, just gross. Okay. But then you know, at twenty. It seemed wild for me to do that kind of like to to to, what was pr- your percentage? to produce that kind of money. What, what was your percentage in that? Oh, uh, not good. No, <laughs> not good. I blew all of the money. On what? On on yeah on 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 not quoting the project right. Mm. On people not working uh, fast enough. So it wasn't enough. like you were spending it. You were just no, no, like no. I, I didn't spend it. I, back in I the wasn't company. going to the casino. So and, you're underbidding and your work. Yeah, ah. yeah. I was, I was a kid. I, I, yeah, I needed yeah. to learn. Right. And uh, apparently, you learned while uh, fucking up. So, and I yeah. did. <laughs> it hey, trashed my learn. It trashed my credit for a while. Oh uh, no. Yeah, man. Because I got after like it was hard because uh, you know I had to learn to work. So like. Mm-hmm. I didn't know, so I was super lazy. So I got in trouble, and then I didn't have any money, and then, yeah. and I was like, okay, I'm, I, at some point I had to borrow like a hundred bucks to fill up my van of gas, because uh, to do to to go on the actual job site it's because I was wait, I was waiting on on fucking checks to to clear or whatever. Right. And uh, yeah, that was wild. That's crazy. But then, so um, you had to move on. You said forget had to, it. Yeah, had to yeah. move on, and then I worked, and then uh, I became uh, I became a just well. Somewhat successful uh, real estate agent in Montreal, and then I moved here, mm-hmm. and then uh, talking. Yeah, <laughs> nice man. Yeah. Well, uh, like I always say, everybody's like, work smarter, work smarter. Well, I think you got to do both. You yeah. got to work hard and you got to work smart. You know, it takes both of that to make it. It does. It, it's it's uh, but it's it's crazy how you know like the more you, you gain experience, the less um, like kind of hard the hard work becomes. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you get you, you you get stronger a little bit at it. Oh yeah. It's like when you work out. That's right. And then you like to work out. <laughs> <laughs> like your leg. <laughs> uh, That's good, man. <laughs> so so so, um, the 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 inspection company. Yeah. yeah. So all right, I'll tell you a little bit about me. Um, I grew up here in Florida, yeah. born and raised. Lived here until I was about seventeen. Um, took off, moved, well, I lived in a little town, it's called Osteen, kind of central Florida, just kind of north of Orlando. Okay. And, um, small little country town, man. You know when they say, like, oh, I walked a mile in the snow to the bus stop. Well, I walked a mile in the Florida heat to the bus <laughs> stop. One way. <laughs> well. <laughs> that was, that was me growing up. Um, so, look, pretty humble, you know, upbringing. My, um, my dad... He was an electrician, and so he was blue collar, um, hard, hard worker. I look up to that guy a lot. He's helped me a lot in my career, actually. And um, he built our house. Um, he had five acres, had a little farm. Um, took three years to build our house. We lived in a, a trailer, actually. Whoa. And um, I was little, so I was like maybe three years old when we moved into the house. And uh, so from from there, we went and uh, I lived there for like, 15 years, moved to New Smyrna Beach, um, surfed a lot over there, got yeah, a lot of crazy surfing. stories there, yeah, a lot of surfing. Um, can, we, can we have uh, some water? Yeah, I'm already on okay, it. Nice. Water and good. beers right. are on the way. Oh, that's good, that's good. <laughs> All right, gotcha. I like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> what do you, um, I'm curious about like your dad, because I, I, I look up to my dad a lot too, and Mm-hmm. What's um what's the most um like impressive thing like wh- what do you look up why do you look up your dad? Um, one because he's such a hard worker. He was always a hard worker. Um, kind of learned that from osmosis, you know. And um, he taught me a lot too as I got older. When I was younger, I didn't see him a whole lot. You know, he was always gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, it's it's uh. It, 
I guess it's more um, it's more weird if the dad is always around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Well, that did happen for a little while, but um, that wasn't a that wasn't a good time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but most of the, most of the time, I was by myself. I mean, um, you know, my mom and dad they uh, they broke up when I was like eleven, and um, got divorced. Everybody split up. I have two sisters. One went to Texas. Um, the other one moved to kind of Orlando. Oh, so they moved when your parents got divorced? Uh, yeah, because, um, well, like, we all stayed with my mom at first, and then I left, and I went to uh, uh, Popka with my dad. I lived with him for a little while. Okay. Then we came back and uh, moved back into the house. It was too much for my mom to take care of, um, so she left, and then um, my sister stayed for a little bit, and then... They left, so one went to Texas, and the other one went to live with my mom Okay. in Winter Park. So um, <laughs> then I was kind of by myself, you know? I but thought I was great. I was so like, oh, okay, I, what, I, 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 I have nobody you? telling me what to do How anymore. old were you then? Um, I was like 13. Oh, shit, you, you were living by yourself at 13? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'd see my dad maybe That's once wild. every three weeks. That's so young. Yeah. <laughs> he would, like, come and, like, you know, bring me food. I'd be <laughs> <laughs> like, Dad, I need Wait, you to like sign this for me for school. <laughs> He's like, I'll see you in three weeks. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> of course, I couldn't tell my mom that. You know, she would have made me live with her, and I didn't want to do that at the time. Why know? not? Um, I don't know. Maybe because I didn't want the discipline. You know, I kind of liked being by myself like for a little while. Yeah, I liked the freedom. So, huh. so you were... Uh, Little shit, even at 13. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was Cause, crazy. Because cause I, I don't see the pretty, like, nice boy, like, always behave, like, living alone at 13, like, for sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, I could come and go as I please. If I didn't want to go to school, I didn't have to I just sleep in or do whatever, <laughs> you know? And I mean... <laughs> telling you guys all my secrets here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, so that's how I grew up. So, you know, you kind of grow up quick when you're like that. It's that's like, true, that's true. But yeah. the crazy thing is that not, I was not alone because my parents got divorced too, but I, we were doing one week a week, one week, one week. Mm -hmm. And um, we were going at the same high school. And by the time I, I was 15, um, my girlfriend at the time moved in. Moved with in us. with you? Yeah. At 15? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because the the check this guy out. So so <laughs> I grew up fast as well, but then not for the same reason. Because that was weird. Because there was something. Um, it was it was uh, like trouble with with her family, with her mom. Mm. And uh, one night, like she called me like crying, like and I was like, she left. Like she 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 left home, so they didn't know where it, where she where she was. Oh, so you kidnapped her? No, <laughs> no, she she left, and then and then. And then she called me, and then apparently something something happened, and her mom. Uh, anyway, they didn't know where she was. And then when we found her that night, well, she went back with us uh, at home, and I told my parents, I was like, "Look, um, this is very scary. We can't let her leave. Like, we can't let her like go back in in those conditions. Like, maybe we keep her like a couple of days, mm -hmm. and then a couple of days turns to in, into like, a couple of weeks, and then a couple of months. I, we and then she." My dad uh, and then my mom, they brought her. They brought her in and then treated her like like their their daughter. Oh, nice. Yeah. So how many kids do you have? Well, none. <laughs> for that's good. That's good. I have good no you, kids. Good for you. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, no kids are great though. That's well, yeah. I <laughs> one I'd day, right? I'd like to have kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, I cool. skipped a lot of class too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In school, man. Is it worth it? Uh, I don't yeah. know. It it'd be cool to have um to have good teachers. Yeah. Well of course, yeah. you know. It, well it'd, it'd be, be cool good if they actually taught you like what you need in the real world. Not yeah. all the stuff that you're not gonna use and yeah. that's mostly what it is. But then but then the, the the problem too the problem as well is like our our school system is and it's the same in Canada, it's the same here. Um our our school system was designed um to create factory workers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to, to, to make them, like, an orderly listen. Give them some structure. The, no, like, yeah, show structure. Show this time, leave this time, no. lunch this time. And then kill creativity and then kill um, any sense of, like, you know, 
do wanting to do your, your own things because you want to you want to have you want to build shit on the chain so you want everybody to do the same fucking thing all the time isn't that the rockefeller model yeah but i don't think that's him that that, that invented this um it was some it was someone else but uh yeah it's it's uh it's weird like we kind of need and then and then the craziest part for me is basically like when there's an example whatever you can't you can't do it with you have to do it alone mm -hmm. and then in the real world that that is never the the best yeah. solution yeah that's when you so have true. a problem yeah you right? work together on it not even no like or 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 if you don't know what to do you call everybody that you think that might know what to do <laughs> that's right and then you fucking like hey man what do i do i have this going on i don't know what the fuck to do mm -hmm. so that's how that knows. and then you call somebody that knows because yeah. you can't know sh you can't know anything yeah. like that, I, that's the key to success to me is uh you know surrounding yourself with good people if you don't have good people around you then how are you going to be successful because you can't do it by yourself when, yeah that's when true. did you learn that when did i learn that yeah um, what was like the defining moment for you i'd say just uh when i try to do everything myself and i just like there's not enough time in the day you know so you got to bring people in and if you're doing jobs and like you know maybe you're only making enough for yourself and for your family but you got to bring somebody else in and you got to like live that stress for a little while because if you don't then you're going to fail anyways i mean i'd work 18 hours a day still not long enough so you got to bring some people in even if it hurts your pocketbook and pay them you know and, and have them help you yeah so, yeah super important that that was kind of like when i first started my inspection business is when i really understood that because I started getting bigger and bigger, and I just couldn't how, keep There's up. only so much you can do by yourself. Yeah, exactly. How long ago was, was that? Like, when did, you, when did you actually start the, the business? Because it seems like, from what I, from what I see, because we, we've, we've known each other for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. 2019, we, we met, we met right. at uh, Grant Cardone's office. Yep. Um, that Miami, was Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Flew from California and, to come out, and for some reason, you're one of the only person that I that I keep in touch with um, during that out time. Out of the whole thing, right? Out of the whole thing, there's like I don't know, 25, 30 people that show up. Maybe a little it. bit more, may, maybe like even like 50 or something. Yeah, but not that not that many to make it too big because it, we, it was very like intimate and it was it was nice when we had when he actually like sat with us mm -hmm. um, and then we we kind of talked. Right. Um, that was uh, that was interesting. I remember this, that day in, um, very well because it was it was the first time for me that I saw like a, like a billionaire, I guess, in person, or like I knew I it was he was a billionaire, and I just had like read all of the all of his books. Mm -hmm. So I look up to the guy, and he, he does real estate, and I like I like yeah. real estate. Um, I like his motivation, man. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It really I, gets you kind of pumped up and focused. That's actually. that. The crazy thing is, I listen. We still wear the same band too. Yeah, right? don't be a little bitch. <laughs> it's a reminder for you and for me. <laughs> oh yeah, because my my inner bitch is so strong. Man. <laughs> beat it up every day. <laughs> I I have to force myself to do everything. Yeah, I don't, that's that's crazy because um, my voice like do you, like do you have a, like a voice in your head like do, or or. Do, because I, 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 I talk, I try not to listen to. You know. I, well, I talk to myself <laughs> all the time. I have the best conversation with myself. Really? But the crazy thing is, like, my inner voice is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> what is it telling you? Like, go back and to sleep. Yeah. Go it tells. Down. It tells me like. It tells me like. Don't oh, go work out. Fuck this! Like, just like fucking stay here. It's nice. Oh, yeah. eat this burger. <laughs> 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 or don't 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 do this. Don't, you can, you can keep working out today. Yeah, if you worked out okay. today, it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, you make it up tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Everybody and has Is it that, the same for you? I think everybody has that. Really? Oh, yeah. No, it's not the same for her. No, it's no? the opposite. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, mine's like, you're not doing enough. Keep going. You can do more. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's good. That, when we figured that out, uh -huh. it was wild. Because then it's funny because we see that, well, we uh, the default setting is completely different. Yeah, but is that for everything that you do? Everything. Everything. Yeah. Wow. As to I me, like force myself to relax. Yeah, she forces oh, herself yeah. to relax. I force myself to go. Yeah. So I'm like all all the time like I argue with myself. I'm like I'm like no. Don't do it. It's nice. And then and then and then I hear myself and I'm like you fucking bitch. <laughs> 
Do you hear yourself like talking like an idiot? Yeah, get your ass up. Get your ass up. <laughs> go fucking work out. Did she tell you the same thing? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been always doing this for a while. And then yeah. and then it's because of uh in part of, of Cordon, because he's mm -hmm. basically one of my favorite books that I listen on repeat is um Be Obsess or Be Average. Yeah. And then I had I had forgotten about that a little bit and then I started to listen to it again um a couple of months ago and I was like, okay, like I need to tell you this. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's so good. That'll give you motivation, but you know who I like is Jocko Willing. Yeah, that's a good that one. guy's yeah. discipline, discipline, it's discipline. You see, you see that 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 dude's into Instagram is the wildest. Everything that's on there, it's just fucking his watch. I know. At clocking at four thirty <laughs> every day. Sometimes early, fucking sometimes later. Fucking every day. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't I don't know if well, and that's the thing. He posts every day. Mm -hmm. Every day he doesn't quit. He, no. Yeah. So I was I was gonna say like I can't remember. Um, seeing him uh, not post it every day, but then, and I was like in my head, I was like, "Well, you idiot! He, maybe he posts just the day he does, right?" Yeah. But then when you actually look, it's fucking twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight. It's, uh -huh. it's fucking every day. Yeah, it's wild. That dude is wild. Can you yeah, imagine, that's like, hardcore, man. dude? Can you can you imagine following following a, a a guy like this at war? I know. And when you want to quit, he, he's not going to let you. Dude, you want that guy on your team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to have some of those people around you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Those, are, those are the hardcore elites. So how you did you end up, because um, you obviously both went to the same, you said Grand Cardone. How did you, what, how did you find that? Why did you end up going? Um, actually, I didn't even know the guy existed um, much before I went. I kind of found him on YouTube. I'd see him on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, um. Because I like real estate too, you know, and so <laughs> that's how I found it. So similar, Just right? dabbling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, then I was like, man, this guy, he's like pumped up, like wired, like doing good stuff every day, every day, yeah. every day. And so um, I, I just liked his uh, attitude, but I knew he was kind of like, you know, he's got that strong personality. You know, you get in the room with him, he's like, he likes to take it, over. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I... It was weird when 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 he he just got in the room like the we, we kind of saw like the energy change a little bit of like everyone was one of like whoa yeah yeah <laughs> especially the people that work for him yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah. um but yeah the, like I didn't know a whole lot about him and um I think before that I actually he came to L A and okay. um yeah want that beer bro oh uh, yeah nice. Hope um, you guys like Stella. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, oh shit, I need to count those calories. <laughs> You'll make it up <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> You'll make it up tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I had a couple left, so that's good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, I went to, uh, uh, he came out to LA and we went um, uh, to his, like, you know, whatever kind of thing he was doing, like his little seminar. Mm hmm. And um, so when I went in there, it was pretty impressive, you know. He's, um, and, then, you know, it's like a, f a free thing, I think. And then it's like, of course, he, he makes some money on the sales when he's doing it. At of the course, time, yeah. Right? So you come in there, and then um, <clears throat> I kind of like what he had to say. We ended up staying later. Um, I guess they had this, like, little after part um, where he's, like, more personal questions. I asked yeah, him a yeah. few questions there. And um, I was like, oh, okay. And then I met some of his people, and you know, I stayed in touch. And then... Um, that's when they, like, sent out that thing, like, hey, we're going to have some people come out, you know, and fill this info out and see if we pick you, you know. Mm. So I think that's the same thing, right? No, it wasn't the same thing for me. I think uh, for me it was I did uh, one of the uh, mentorship program, I guess, before. Um, oh, okay. So you're already doing some things. Yeah, yeah. So so I read the book before because um, I found, like, 10X or whatever, and then I read the other books because I like the I liked the information. Then um, I, I did, uh, I think, two of his mentorship before, and uh, after the first one. Uh, and then th one, one was during the first month of COVID. So I was like, well, might as well. I have nothing else to do. And then it was kind of... Um, well, that was after then the... Because we that went was, to that their was conference. Yeah, but we went, conference we, went, we went, yeah, we went to the first conference was 2019. Um, but then that's when I first did the, f I did the first one. Mm -hmm. Then after I did the second one in 2020, I guess. 
2020. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I did the conference and then I did a uh, master whatever, you know, yeah, afterwards. Yeah. It was pricey. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's Worth when it? that's when uh, Brandon Dawson came into the into it. That guy's smart, man. That guy's smart, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Can. It's very cool what they're doing too, because uh, to build all of those companies and to actually like um, when they when they hit, I guess they they hit a certain level, they invest in it. Mm -hmm. They're gonna coach you to get it there, and then they invest in you. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. They got a good program. Is that what happened uh, when you started to grow yours? Um. 2019 I, I started my business in um well 2010 me and a buddy of mine oh shit that's a long time ago yeah so i was uh just finishing up high school 2009 i graduated oh, oh really yeah dude you're a lot younger <laughs> than me <laughs> high yeah. school for me was like 98 in 20 in 2010 i was uh so it's called cjep in 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 quebec it's like in between high school and and college and it's just like two, three f years that you just, you fuck up and you play football. Mm. So that's what I did. That sounds good, man. I played football, <laughs> I went to the bar, and then my life was that good. Was it? That was it. That was it. That's high school? <laughs> no, that's after. Oh, I was, that's your college. I was major. No, it's before. So that's the, that's the thing. In Canada and Quebec, uh -huh. it's the only one that's different. But then, mm. but then it's called, it's, so it's high school. There's five years, five year, years of high school. Then you finish, it's called Cégep. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's two years if you do like the normal like uh, social studies or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you can do more, but then there's a lot of people that do more. And then you can do three if you do, uh, it's called a, a technique, uh, technical program. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, but then I went there to play football and then I, I did. So I just stayed for three years and I went to college. Okay. In Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, always learning, man. That's one of my things is you can never stop learning. I mean, you can go to school and, and they can teach you, you know, whatever. But even after you graduate and you're done with school, you got to keep learning. You got to keep reading books. Well, yeah, you have always to. Always got to keep progressing. The, uh, other, otherwise, like, how how can you, like, how can you get better? Yeah. Who, like, who doesn't want to be? stop. They just stop learning. They're like, all right, I'll just do my job. That's it. They don't. They don't keep learning. And then you die. Yeah. <laughs> well, that Guess sounds so. interesting. <laughs> no, no, but like, okay, if 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 let's say you you, you just do your job, mm -hmm. and then and then what, what what do you do? Like you just watch movies all the time. And lot, I'm not saying a lot I'm of people don't have that focus even after work, and that's what it takes. Like, you can go to your regular day job, you know, and that's what I did. I, I was working yeah. all day. And then I was doing my stuff on the side. So back in 2007, I got my general contractor's license. and um, But I got my actual inspection license. It's through the state. It's California. And it's the only state that regulates hospitals the way they do. Um, it's about earthquake safety, right? Oh, yeah, because you guys have a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, and it comes from 1973, Alfred E. Alquist Act. I won't get all technical because that's just boring. But, <laughs> <laughs> but at least you uh, know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and so you know they had these earthquakes and like all of you, that hospital, they had the whole stair, exterior stair, fall off the building. The whole first floor, you know, dropped oh, basically. Shit. Yeah, and they said, oh well, maybe we need better inspection <laughs> <laughs> or better contractors at the time. You know? <laughs> so one of one of the two. Um, so they regulate it like really heavy and it kind of first started out with just earthquake stuff. And then I was just like totally compounded to fire life safety. And so we're looking at everything. So you're they probably the they soil prob all the way up. So do you think, do you think maybe they over regulated and they over killed or cause like, um, cause like the, something, something major happened. Well, I'm not going to say that because then, my then, job. then it's California. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it is and California. It's California. It's regulations, and know? then they, they probably like, okay. They did. They, they did all of the re the regulation. Maybe maybe a little bit overkill. Mm -hmm. How was the construction cost um, after? I mean, the, well, when I got into it, did it spike a lot? Yeah, I mean, when I started understanding that kind of factor, um, it was already at like a thousand dollars a square foot mm -hmm. to build a hospital in California. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, you can probably do the same thing in another state for I don't know four hundred dollars a square foot, five hundred dollars a square foot at the time. Yeah, you know now it's it's uh, much higher, 
So prices keep going up, and then you got inflation right now, and you know material procurement, and that's been a problem. And um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, long lead times, you know, just to get materials. So I mean, the contractors have to deal with that more than us being inspection, but yeah. Um, but then your your fees, I guess it's it's a percentage of of the total cost, right? Yeah, I mean you can you can base it off of that, um, based off experience, really. Mm -hmm. I mean even contractors, that's how they bid jobs. It's based off experience, and then of course they do the material takeoff and then your labor costs, yeah. you know, and then overhead and profit. And all how that. does the bidding work? So for me, um, you bid it by the hour, pretty much. Um, so. Inspections, you're bidding at uh, four hour, eight hour minimums. So that's how, uh, you know, you look at a job, you look at the plans, and then you go, okay, maybe this is three days a week, four hours a day, you know? And if you're doing a big job, then you're like, all right, I'm full time, because it's continuous inspection. So it's eight hours oh, a day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah. it's not like, it's, it's, you're always, you, ha you always have people inspecting shit. That yeah. they've been doing. Yeah, well, yeah like Especially you're checking the job. concrete's done or the framing was finished and you guys yeah. are checking that. Kind of well, some things you got to be there as they're doing it. Huh. So for one, concrete, you got to be there as they're placing concrete. To make sure that they're doing uh, yeah. the, the, the right thing. Right. Huh. Same thing with welding. Welding big steel. I mean, you should see these steel members. They're huge. For some, for some reason, for some reason, I thought, I thought, because, um, you know, obviously I don't know inspection, but, but then in my head, I was like, well, I guess they build the building, and then you guys do like a like a home inspection. Because yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> no, because a lot of money will get put into like actually building something up, and then you guys will inspect it and say redo the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. So th that's that's correct. That's some <laughs> of the point is so they're not going backwards and doing everything all over again, and yeah, they're yeah, keeping yeah. on schedule. And there's a lot of people we got to work with um, doing the job that we do. We have to interact with so many people. So we're dealing with the architects, the engineers. Um, we have the contractor to work with. We have the owners. We have construction managers. Then we have licensing, CDPH. So um, we're dealing with all these people in the local fire department. What's um, that? What's the, that? The licensing, uh, you said CDPH? Yeah. Um, that's just California Department of Public Health. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they come out there. They're the ones that actually license the hospitals. So we do all the inspections, and what ours is is Oshpod. Or are the hospital private in, in California, or or they're public? Um, they're private, but they still get like federal and state money too. Yeah, yeah. So, but they're managed privately. Yeah, for the most part. I mean, we still have like um, veterans hospitals and stuff that we don't even inspect over there. It's weird. They have Why? their own because um, it's federal. So hmm. private inspection. They have, like, they still do inspections, but it's not inspector of record that the state regulates. This is federal stuff, so it's weird because we do all the hospitals throughout California except for those. Really? Yeah. So they'll still have, like, um, sometimes... Well, who, who does those? Like, how, like, let's say, could you, could you get accredited to do that? Yeah, I mean, you can get license specific for a special inspection. So yeah. special inspection is still required, so we have multiple layers of inspection. So what I do is inspector of record work, so IOR, and um, then we have special inspectors, which is a whole different company, and uh, they come in, they'll do the specialty stuff like welding, um, shot creek, concrete, masonry, um, fireproofing, yeah, sometimes fire stopping, um, and then we oversee them. So we make sure that they're doing their job. We you know coordinate all that, but we're doing the overall general. So you're professional Karens. <laughs> A can or something. <laughs> or? <laughs> hey, that's not that right. <laughs> <laughs> says right here in the code. It says in the code here that your mom's We're a in the bitch. Code. It's in the code. <laughs> <laughs> Show me. Okay. So, with all the experience that you have, what is the uh, the biggest either opportunity or thing that frustrates you the most um, that you see that can be done better? Um. Well, I mean, sometimes it's very bureaucratical. You know, you have so many layers to go through. And then when you work for county hospitals, it's even more. You know, you have way many, like so many layers of people and just like. People that you don't know what to, what they do. Yeah. You're like, um, you're like why, why are you here? <laughs> they just, just load it up. Can and then I just it's fucking like, okay, talk I got to deal with this guy on this little portion and then this guy for this. And it's, it's a lot. But so do like. 
Okay, so that's that's actually that's frustrating. Um, well, Is that okay. more particular to California? Well, I think you can probably have that in anything. Just um, more layers, maybe. It's just, I guess yeah. it's just government. Yeah. It's you government. Just, it's government. Right. Of course. They get involved. It's just fucking government. I know. Because I'm sure, I'm sure you, don't, you don't talk to the guy actually taking the decision. You talk to 20 people. Well, see, what's funny is that um, all we do is observe and report. Yeah. That's our job, right? Yeah. So we don't make decisions. Like, if they want to change something on the drawings mm -hmm. or the specifications... Like, we can't make that call. But what happens is just making sure stuff does. is done right to code. Okay, right. but are you, like, being a Karen on the job site? Like, hey, it's not, it doesn't work? Or are you going to be, like, a... <laughs> Someone uh, might I think they're a Karen. That. Or, 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 <laughs> or they don't, they no, no, but that's, that a that's actually sucks. a serious question. Because, because are you going to bitch on the, on the site? Or are you going to snitch? And then you're going to tell the, the, no, the you boss? Can't. No, you what can't. What does that, how does that work? Like that. You got to tell the contract, you got to be able to tell the contractor first. Yeah, yeah. And if you can't work for the contractor and then make it make sense... Then they're gonna like. There's plenty of inspectors out there that maybe they don't really. They're not strong in one discipline, but they're strong in another. But they're still looking at that discipline that they're not strong in. Yeah. And so, say maybe they're good in welding, but they don't know anything about fire resistant um, construction. And so they're over there telling the framer and the drywaller, you know, this is wrong. And the framer and drywall is like, hey, why? Why is this wrong? Show me. And they can't show them. Yeah. yeah. That happens a lot. Actually. Well, yeah, because the you know like. People can have a job and be in, and and still be complete idiots. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Just look. So it, just look at the Trudeau. more well-rounded you are. Just look at Trudeau. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that guy. Uh, Horrible. That that guy is probably the least qualified. I couldn't. He he. I don't think he could run a lemonade stand on 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 the streets. Yeah. He, he, it couldn't. It couldn't. It couldn't be done. Yeah, they, they should have some kind of experience running a business. They're going to run a country. They should run a business first because you got to know how to work with people when you run a business. And that guy, I mean, he's he's more of a dictator now. <laughs> yeah. he, he likes... Uh, Canada's starting to look um, somewhat weird. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, very communist -y. I know. <laughs> so you got to be well-rounded, and then you got to have but tons of years of experience to understand the ins and outs of what we do as far as hospital construction. Yeah. Everybody says, oh, it's not, it's not you know, um, rocket science, but it's, a, it's actually very difficult. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure, because you, you need to know exactly how everything is supposed to be made. Yeah. By, like, by... And you really become a manager in a lot of ways, you know, but... Was the there jurisdiction looks down on that? You're not supposed to do that. Was there sometimes like that um, you could not um, agree with uh, a contractor on 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 a job? Well, all the, all time. the time, probably yeah, all the time. And then what happened then? Well, you know, you got to look at it, talk it through, Pretty and sure figure out like the way to be successful in I think any industry is to know how to navigate through issues. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, you gotta, if you're really experienced, then you can say, hey, well, we did this on this project and it worked, you know, or here's what this says and you can use yeah. this for this condition. So if you give them options and you're helping them out yeah. and lead them in the right direction, you're not supposed to give them direction, but you're just saying, hey, these are some options for you. Then it's like tenfold. They'll, they'll like you for it because they actually learn something from it too, you know? So Yeah, because you want, at the end of the day, you want the project to go to go through and you want it, you want everything to work. Yeah. And, well, if you're actually good at your job, you're going to make sure, like, you're not just, you're just going to be bitching about, about the fact that he's not doing uh, the, the right thing. You're going to show him, like, look, no, this is the better way to do it. This is actually how we sh it should be done. This is mm -hmm. up the code. This yeah. So let's do let's do that. Yeah, and as far as inspection goes, you, you're not going to get sued. Those inspectors that base their success off of failures of inspections is got the total wrong mentality. It's totally wrong. I mean, uh, in a perfect world, you wouldn't have any failures, but that's not going to happen. No, so there's always going to. You got to yeah. have some rules. And yeah. what I learned too is like I've come on to projects mm -hmm. that big jobs. I mean, you know, a couple hundred million dollar jobs, and um, they had inspectors there that. Um, you know, we're kind of lax, weren't really looking at everything. And then I come in and then I see a lot more stuff. And so I say, okay, this is what we got to do to fix these things. And then they say, well, if we would have known this or we would have had this kind of standard to begin with, yeah. then we would have done that, you know. Yeah. But if they're not having a hard standard at first, you got to be a little hard when you come into it. Because you can always, like, loosen up and kind of, you know, work around things as far as getting 
you know, and of course you're talking to the engineers and you're figuring things out. But if you're like starting losing, strong, yeah, if, if you're like lax at the beginning, you can't go strong afterwards. They're not gonna like you. That's just a no, of course, personality thing. Because it's never, it's never nice to to get told by the fucking other guy um, that you're not doing your job properly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, well, it's that's what we do every day. <laughs> Did this wrong? <laughs> hey man, Fix it. have you always found like navigating conflict? Uh, it comes easily, or mm. is it something you're constantly trying to refine? I mean, um, well, he's been a fat, fat boy, bro, all his life. I can't, you can't figure something Wait, out. <laughs> he's just like going like a uh, throwing a Bud Light to the guy. He's like, dude, let's just fucking work it out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> no, I like to I like to problem solve, and that's one thing I like about my industry is like I'm always problem solving. You know, um, it's boring if you if you're not doing things, and there's always a different way to build something. You know? Yeah. Um, but you know, you'll get in conflicts with guys. I've gotten in plenty of major conflicts with guys. You know, especially when I first started. Um, you know, it's like you go in there and they they don't respect like, you. I'm young. Most of the inspectors are oh, old. Oh, that's the toughest part. Yeah, when you know? you're younger. You must like, not know no what experience. you're doing. Yeah. 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 What I does this guy know? He's, I got that a lot. <laughs> how, did, how did you handle that? Especially, yes, being young. Coming it's funny. In I industry. have this fire marshal. I look up to this guy. Uh, a few of them anyways, but his name is Sander. And, um, Call Neil Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Sander Moss. And um, he, uh, when he first met me, he's like, where did this guy come from? He's usually off the beach over here. You know, <laughs> go back and watch Surfer your kid. surfboard. You know, and I'm like... Did you have okay. long hair back then? No, no. no. <laughs> I always had short hair. Yeah? Well, actually, when I was younger, I had long hair. It's just super curly, though. I could have an uh, afro if I wanted. Yeah. Um, I had an afro, too, but... It did you? It's yeah, not you a good look, look like for me. No? It's not a good look for me, no. You should do it again. <laughs> I'm sure it's good. You know? uh, well, we're going back to the 70s style, so I guess I'm going to do it. <laughs> Get your bell bottoms. Yeah, yeah. I could, yeah. I could eat them at some point. That was wild. Anyway, what? My hair. hair. Oh. Like this, like this where they were long. I wouldn't suggest that. No, it's not nice. It's not sanitary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, this guy Sander. But afterwards, now, like I talked to him the other day about this because um, he was he brought it up and um, he's like, you know, hey, you you turned out to be one of the, like the best inspector I've worked with, and he's nice. super rigid, hard. Like, you got to know your stuff if you work with him. Is that is that a contractor or? No, Fire yeah, Marshall. he works. Yeah, he works for the state. Oh, okay, nice. Ashpod, or now it's HKI. So you make sure you inspect co correctly. Yeah, so, so we inspect. We have a lot of layers too over us. Yeah, um, we take direction from the architect and engineers, but we also have the state that comes out. They're the ones that approve change orders and you know look at RFIs stuff like that. Do they uh, do they actually know what they're talking about? The people oh, yeah. that work for they're, the state, yeah. Yeah, and and they're they're all pretty smart, man. They, they've been doing it for a long time. They know their stuff. Nice. been around you know um they're experienced and qualified so like when they go out there and they're like hey let's go walk the job yeah. they start bringing up all these issues and maybe that inspector's been missing this stuff all the time it's not good you know it's cool it's cool when it's cool when um you you work with someone and you can see like yeah this this dude is a, a killer at his job mm -hmm. It's it's so nice. It is, yeah. yeah it's refreshing. Yeah, you know, because everybody you seems to suck. Like <laughs> 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 you got a lot of that, man. You got a so lot, of, yeah. Yeah. What do you what do you look for? Because you talk about somebody that's uh, that's skilled or it's refreshing. What do you look for in somebody? Well, um, of course, their knowledge base and their experience. Like I got one guy that works um, with me, and he uh, he actually brought me into the business. Um, his name's Tom. Wait, how? Um, Kidnapped you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I, um, you know, I, I grew up here in Florida, and then I moved to Hawaii. I lived there in Maui for like a year, just surfed and did that stuff. And then I came to California after that, and that was in 98 when I got into California. Was so that I lived in Glendale. Anywhere near uh, where the fire, Lahina? Lahina, Lahina. 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 yeah. That's yeah, it's that right there, no? right? It's like the south side, oh, southwest. Were you close to that? Southwest. No? Yeah, I lived in Kihei. Kihei is on the south side, so, I mean, that's, you drive that's, around that's the island, wild it takes what about 30 there. minutes to get there. Have oh you man, seen? Uh, have you seen all of the the default apparently Horrible. that the government didn't do? Apparently, oh. there's there's some guy that that was like, uh, oh no, we need we need to conserve water for for the for yeah, preservation the or whatever, right and then and then they, they they didn't release the water for like hours. Yeah, when it was burning. It's horrific. It's, uh, yeah. How how dumb can you be? I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's really weird. A lot of things that went down. I don't understand it. 
It, se- it seems like a lot of failures from the people that are supposed to be helping you. It, you se- it seems like everything that should, every in- infrastructure that should be um, maintained, it seemed to be, uh, it seemed to have a lack of, of maintenance in like in like everything. Yeah. Because I heard, I heard, I'm not, I'm, and maybe I'm talking out of my ass on this, but like I heard that um, they didn't cut the trees or, or, or things like that over the power lines and, and things like that. It's just yeah. basic maintenance. Right. When, and then apparently there, there's, that's how um, that's how the fire started or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of like up in Northern California. What was the name of that town? It started with like a P or something. Uh, anyways, um, it was major, major fire from, you know, it was all electrical power lines, you know, and uh, that's what caused the fire because they weren't maintaining them. You get high winds, you know, and you're just like looking for a spark, you know, especially out of transformers. Yeah. But the so. crazy thing, the crazy thing is, it seems that it seemed that um, um, a lot of the fires that's, that are still happening are, are caused by by kind of us, you know, and yeah. then and then uh, like lack of maintenance. I know like thunder is a big thing for for fire. Um, there's lightning, uh, lightning. yeah, lightning. Yeah. Are um, we talking about the uh, the Pacific Gas and Electric company that owned all those lines? Yeah, yeah, it's in Northern California. What was the name of that town? It, it killed That's a lot of people. That's what I was looking people. at, but it was burned was like over almost people. a little over 900,000 acres burned, 13,000 yeah. structures, uh, small horrible. community of Greenville. Oh, Sacramento, north of Sacramento. North of Sacramento, right. But the, yeah. crazy, the crazy thing, the crazy thing, and when you look at the total acreage uh, that burned a year. Um, oh, it was paradise. It's, it was named, it, it's, right? it's paradise? not burning at all. There's not, the, it, it's in, it's in complete decline since, since before. And, and everybody's like losing their mind with the saying that it's climate change and all. And we can, we can see it's like climate the, change. It's base. It's, it drives it, me nuts. It is. It's, a, it's such a, um, I mean, o- over the years, I mean, how long have they been tracking climate change? This is the biggest money grab ever. People can say, oh, they don't agree with you because they've been <laughs> indoctrinated their whole life We're all through school. Climate change is real. Okay, sure it is. But, but I'm not I'm not saying the climate doesn't change, but but right. we're so we're we're but we're the, so there's full. nothing that we we can do to help it. I mean you exactly. can have clean water, you can take care of your water, you can do, you know, emissions, things like that with vehicles, but you're not gonna change what's already there. But and you, you know, know the biggest people pushing it? Are the ones flying around in their jets? Yeah, <laughs> way more emissions than what yeah. we're doing. You yeah, know? it's always the one. I want to see their carbon footprint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that. That's right? the funny thing about this. And then the way I see it, though, is like, well, first of all, we don't have, um, we d- we don't have uh, enough. Um, what's this word? Uh, uh, like, see everything globally. Like, uh, we don't have enough. Like, how's how, what's, anyway? Um, perspective. Okay. Perspective. Perspective. There you go. <laughs> As, uh, you know, I, kn- I knew it was something smart, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah um, you sounded really smart. <laughs> 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 like, the big picture? Yeah. No, but, like, it, it, we don't have enough pers- perspective as, uh, like, kind of a society. And we think that yeah, 100 years, 200 years, 300 years is, is a long time. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not a long time. It's not. It's not a long time at all. Compared to how old the earth is, right? Huh? Compared to how old the earth is, right? Exactly. Yeah, so it's nobody knows. So nobody knows. Yeah. There was, at some point, there was ice everywhere here Yeah. in North America. There's there's none now. Right. So the climate changed. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. No. <laughs> the way the way I see it is basically like, you th- the house is not going to uh, get destroyed with um, how clean the floors are. If there's like a lot of clothes or, or shit like that on the floor, you're not gonna s- destroy your roof or, or the house not gonna collapse because the floor is messy. Oh right, I see what you're I saying. I kind of see it the same way. Mm-hmm. Like it's better to obviously have a clean house and a clean uh, environment, mm-hmm. but I don't believe that um, if it's dirty, yeah, I don't believe the planet's gonna implode. Well, it's like electric vehicles, right? What yeah. Does it, what does it take to mine out all the cobalt and everything else that it takes to I know. create a battery? I know. And then where are we getting and, those batteries and from? And the funny Who's thing is, batteries? we both have electric cars. <laughs> I don't drive mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still, yeah. Yeah. You still paid it, so if you don't drive it, it's it wasn't uh, for me originally. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, yeah. Uh, yeah, so but yeah. I but I bought I bought I bought one too, and and um, it was. Not at all because I thought it was 
better for the environment because I wanted to fucking um, say like I'm better than you. I drive an electric car. Mm -hmm. I I said it. Well, we need our energy independence. In my opinion. Well, yeah, because because it's not even. We need oil. Yeah. <laughs> we need coal mines. Oil. We need fracking. Uh, yeah. O oil. Uh, the 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 oil consumption is basically like kind of it's directly correlated with um, uh, the global poverty. Mm -hmm. The when we started to use more oil, um, we saw global poverty. Um, go down the same kind of the same thing mm. that that increased that increased the level of living of people here so by so much and it, it can do because all of you close uh, all of the cars the car goes all oh, of yeah. the all of the trucks the plane mm -hmm. can like just imagine everything that 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 happened that has yeah. oil involved in it oh yeah and we've it's, got plenty of that here, it's everything right here in america it's everything yep <laughs> It's everything, it's and true. and we're gonna be like, no, we're gonna we're gonna stop all of that, mm -hmm. and then what? We, we, there's gonna be horses everywhere again. <laughs> Is that better? Carriage horses. Well, it's nice. Carriage. It's cool. I'm. I, I'd love no to power. play. I'd well, love it's to. It's kind of like, you know, um, what was it? California, right? Yeah. Like, don't don't charge your vehicles. We're having power problems because too many. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the grid, the grid yeah. is not the grid is failed or whatever, and then yeah. the, because of the 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 wind and the solar, that's that's it's a good idea. It'd be it'd be great if it worked, but it it's shit, yeah. and then it kills the wind thing, kills so many birds. <laughs> <laughs> but the crazy thing is, we didn't we didn't look um, at Texas when it snowed really bad. That we was had crazy that storm, and then you know all their power, their solar power, and wind turbines failed and yeah it was a big deal a lot of people lost power a crazy for a long time. i know yeah. i know so and uh, you gotta think about that but that's all coming from government way up high and they're gonna keep pushing it and it's not a lot we can do about it honestly don't buy their stuff <laughs> look at ford they're losing mass amount of money yeah you know so their uh, their projections just like you have tanked. a ford too though uh, oh no you bought it you have a ram yeah Dodger. nice yeah, yeah that's a good one Dodger and GMC, <laughs> you know. But what what Ford? So what Ford did do? They they did the um, the trans thing. No, they did the trans commercial with the Raptors, with the the Ford Raptor. Oh yeah, I mean they got the Ford Raptor. I looked at those, but I don't know. Um, but when I went to Dodge, they have the TRX. TRX yeah. pretty nice truck. Um, but it didn't have as much power. I mean, when you when you're driving the Taycan, you know, it's like. That gets up and goes. And then the TRX is supposed to be, you know, almost 800 horsepower. And it's like, you don't feel it the same. So I was like, this isn't really worth it. So, huh. yeah, I got the um, was a, a big horn, high country Dodge Ram. Better truck to me. And pu more pulling power. Hmm. You know. Does it break? Well, this one is like brand new, but. Oh, the maintenance on it and stuff. I mean, I haven't heard a lot of bad things about that. So, because my dad used to have Rams too when I when I grew up, that was nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. The inside, they really redid it. You know, a lot of electronics on it. It's a big screen it, like your Tesla. It's a real, it's a real dad look. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, know, well, you got to lift it up, put big tires. I on don't, it. I don't look, gr I don't look like a good dad in my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <that's true. laughs> Uh, so, well, but, we um, digressed, huh? I said we digressed. Yeah, yeah, no. So, we want to talk about man some business, business stuff. <coughs> Wait, don't you guys talk about politics all the time, like offline? You, that's what you told me before we yeah, went we to his oh, place. Yeah. So you guys get really into politics. We did do. you watch? Um, what was it? The Trump Tucker and we were watching Tucker and Trump. I was yeah, I exhausted, it. so I didn't pay close enough attention. But there was also the debate. Yeah, I watched a little bit of both actually. So I was kind of going back and forth. Who won? I don't know. The who won? <laughs> well, you know who had the right answers was uh, uh, your guy that you liked, uh, yeah, Vivek, I like the Vivek. Right? Yeah. But I mean, you got to look at his past a little bit. I mean, you got to do a little research on him, see where he got his money. Yeah, and for pharmaceutical. Wait, who was this? Vivek. 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 You do like him or you do not? I missed it. I like what he said, but I don't know if I believe what he said. Hmm. Why? Because he he's smart. He knows what the people want, you know, and he's saying what Trump says. So 
Look at look what you also said. mentioned. Somebody with a really strong business background was really important earlier. It is, and uh, he and created he a big that, business. Yes. I mean, you showed me that. He, what? Yeah, six hundred million dollar he, company he or something. Sold well, that's more than that. That's but, his, that's his but net what did he do when he came out? Hey, I'm a skinny kid Bro, with a funny last name. You know who his, else said that? Yeah, Obama said it. That's right. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. odd. It is odd. odd. It is odd. It's a little undercover. Like, hey, it's odd. is this who I really am? Maybe that's who he is. I don't maybe. know. Maybe. But. Nobody but wants that. Maybe he that's saw. That's who's running the country right now. <laughs> Obama. Yeah. Uh, it's. Uh, right? Uh, I mean, do you think it's really President Biden? No. No. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, and then Ron DeSantis, uh, you know, I liked a lot of stuff he's done, a lot of his policies, a lot of his talk, and yeah. he did good for Florida. Um, I think Christy Nome, she actually opened up before Ron the, DeSantis did. You know, crazy, she was South Dakota, thing. right, Governor? Um, but Ron DeSantis is um, focus on Florida right now, you know? Yeah. Trump was the one that brought him in and had him beat Andrew, what was his last name, Gollum or something? I don't know. Anyways, um, he he brought him up, you know, and now yeah. all of a sudden he's running against them, and and then he's looking around. If they they said that, um, well, what was the topic there? Um, they said if they pardon Trump, you know, raise your hand who would pardon Trump. Yeah, Vivek was like way up there, and then yeah. Ron's like looking around, getting everybody's consensus. Like, oh, okay, I guess so. I guess I, so, yeah. I'll do that too. But That's then. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just know. I, I, I'm not talking bad about the guy, but I wish he'd just stay focused on Florida and then you know yeah, maybe run in 2028. Think think about think about think think about like being him. Like he probably thought that he would because he did such a good job with Florida. He had such a big. Um, but it's not uh, showing through the nation. He won. He he won Miami. Mm-hmm. That that's yeah. that's usually not. It's kind of crazy. That's cr- that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so so he, he he probably he probably believed that um he was on top of the world it was his time the timing was perfect he just won by 20 points and he, but he got a big push from trump that's how yeah, he won you yeah. know and then you no, get but a he, lot of people from cuba that live in miami and they know what communism looks like yeah and so they're like you know when trump's pushing DeSantis, of course they're gonna vote for that, because they already know what it looks like. Of know, course, so. and then he did he did a great job during during COVID. I mean, the the that's the reason I, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, no, he, <laughs> he did fairly good. I mean, he kind of pushed the remdesivir, and um, you know that ended up killing a lot of people. But actually. just just and just having everything everything open. So yeah. so we I don't think that kill. Was the, like the biggest thing. I, that's well, the I biggest thing. Everything here. everything else everything else is um, you know it's it's it's. It's the thing that we, that I don't care about. Hand, you're, you're, that's your job. It's a you problem. Yeah. Handle it. That's fine. If we can protect people by doing like small things while doing um, all of the, our, our normal life, that's fine. But show me a work. Show me the, what the effect is. Well, I think and the I'll fucking thing, do it. The biggest thing too is, you know, I'm hearing a lot of, you know, talk about bringing masks back and, Certain universities are, are requiring that, and it's like, are we doing this all over again? I well, mean, is this going to be twenty twenty four? I mean, apparently, apparently, I, I really hope that we're not going to go down that same path. You know, um, of course, you want everybody to be, you know, healthy and all that stuff, but wearing masks is, is not going to save. Everybody. It's useless. Yeah, and the way that people wear masks, you're not in a clean environment. Well, it's not like you're in an operating room where your hands are clean, you got gloves on, you got a mask, you yeah. know, you're staying protected. These people are wearing the same mask for a week straight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that thing clean? They're just picking it up off of somewhere. Like, here, let me get a mask because yeah, i got to put it on I inside. Had, I had you know? a couple in the, in the, at the bottom of my car. I had a few in, in oh, I had gross. one in every, every of my jackets. I, I um, hate those things, man. Like you can't breathe in them. And it's like, but it's and you want to see people's face. Like, I want to see your smile. Like, well, yeah. I want to see you talking. Like, this is not China. You know, like, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I don't like to say that, but, you know, these those people over there um, are, like, totally, I don't know, they're just forced to do those kind of things. And and maybe they are so forced for so long that they think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the, yeah. But they, it's they, not. It's not. And I mean, that's, that's a, that's a the, hard that's way to the thing. That's the thing. We, we get used to anything. 
mm-hmm. we get used to anything I, the best example is is the is Yomni Park the guy, the girl that escaped North Korea, uh, 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 North oh, Korea. Yeah, yeah. She escaped like at thirteen. Crazy story. Yeah. That's a that's a crazy story. Right. <laughs> Apparently, she was saying uh, that it, for for them it's normal to see dead people in the streets. Right. All that like oh, there's thanks. always oh thanks there's always uh, I saw this video where dead people in the streets over there. Yeah, like this this guy got run over by a car, and then somebody came over and he was already laying on the ground, and they ran him over again. And what? I was like, and it was like some just like random video. I don't even know where I saw it on some feed. What and was the um, What was the video? It's in China, and the guy just gets run over. He's like a worker. And he goes out and stands out there in the alleyway, and this guy just, like, runs him over. And it wasn't, like, a hard, like, the guy was going, you know, 50 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah. The guy was going, like, 10 miles an hour and still just ran him oh, over. Oh, shit. And then, like, people would just walk by, and it was, like, no big deal. So for you to say that story reminded me of that, you know, seeing that. And I was, like, totally, like, dumbfounded. Like, this is, this wow. is how they operate every day. Like, you know, I and yet, know. And yet we Sad. had – did you see uh, the – I saw I saw a guy I think um, in in well it wasn't the state but I think it, I don't know I don't remember what it was it was a black truck and then he just like he just went over a couple of guys in the streets yeah, yeah. where was this at here uh, I don't I don't think it was in Florida but I it was it was in the state I saw this video a couple of days ago mm. oh I saw that yeah he ran over a couple of guys and then the cop hit him yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, and then there was a cup. That there was a cup here. Came out, then, pulled him out of yeah. the truck. Yeah. Thank God that guy was there. Yeah. <laughs> this dude. In, in, well, in they're like you know street racing and yeah. you know doing donuts and stuff in the middle of the intersection, and then um, then the cop came and then he took off and he was probably just like riding crazy trying to get away from the cop and that's how he ran over those people. How did you did you ever? Do like street racing and and donuts in the middle of the street or no? Yes, no. you've done that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, d- I never, I never. Because uh, I was gonna say how them like that. Dumb, like how the, the worst thing I did was I I used to ride four wheelers and dirt bikes on the streets. Yeah, and yeah, I got chased by cops doing that. <laughs> but I'm like, come on, when man, like go check, go like chase the you know guy <laughs> robbing the store down the street, not the you know. 13 14 year old kid riding a four wheeler and a dirt bike, you know, down the <laughs> street is like Osteen. in the country, too. One of the one of the, the guy gave me six tickets. What, yeah, I had to go to court and everything. <laughs> one My of dad the, was mad. One of the craziest <laughs> thing, uh, for me about like Miami is is the those like um, uh, gang of 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 like four wheelers and 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 um, and 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 bikes, dirt bikes. Doing wheelies in the middle of the street oh, on I've fucking Biscayne and yeah. and shit like that. <laughs> as a Canadian, I wasn't bro. doing that stuff. I no, mean, no, no. But dude, as a Canadian, bro, as like, it's wild to see that. We would never see that at home. Yeah. Yeah, this never. is normal. Like the wild Florida, it's just normal for us. Well, I mean, remember <laughs> that show, Cops? Huh? Remember Cops, that TV show. Yeah. You know, I think ninety percent of the video footage they got was from Florida. <laughs> I, I would put I like grew up here. some hard I know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so Florida is different. <laughs> it is different. A lot of people have different perceptions of Florida too. They're like think, oh Miami, yeah, you know, like big city lights, you know, all that. I'm like, no, Florida's no. country. Yeah, real country. Go to the rest of the state. Yeah, I, I'm. I've never. I grew up in the rest of the state. Very, you know, backwards. It's day and night. Yeah. Yeah. I've never listened to more country um, than now, yeah. <laughs> than since I've been living here. Yeah, that's basically everything. Everything I listen to. And then you go to Texas, and it's different country. Like it's the people are different than Florida. Yeah, you notice a lot. But th- Texas was so hot. It's it's. We were well, we were like there Florida. a couple of day uh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was and so and apocalyptic. It was. It it's looked. Uh, I am legend. Yeah, Austin <laughs> looked like a desert city. Um, we desert were walking. desert city, <laughs> yeah. That's desert, hey, desert. He's Canadian. Leave I know he does this all the time. <laughs> huh? You said dessert like a like oh. a sweet dessert. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was great. <laughs> it was <laughs> great. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I, we had yeah. 
we had so much fun but then it looked it looked so empty we were walking around Austin's and supposed to be like you know really nice i mean oh, they actually no, have like Oh, dude, a yeah. little bit of mountainous area. It's great. You know? It's beautiful. Like it looked, Travis over there. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. it looked like a. It looked like a, a. That's where all of California moved to. So yeah. it's different. It was very know. foodie. Oh, the yeah. food was great. Yeah. 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 But I mean, if I moved to Texas, I don't know if I moved to Austin. No. I like Texas, so I got a lot of family there. Where would you move? Um, I mean, probably where my family's at. So it's like north of Houston. About an hour or two north of there. Hmm. We go over there and do cattle sorting, What's ride that? horses, cattle sorting. What's it's so thing? much fun. What's this? My my cousin turned me on to this, and it's um, <laughs> you go out there and they have like a figure eight, you know, kind of caged area, and then you bring in a bunch of calves, like you know, smaller cows. Okay. Um, and they come in and uh, you have like all numbered, and then you just start at whatever number, and you got two people in there on a horse. And so in the figure eight portion, right where it comes in the middle, it's kind of open. And so what you're supposed to do is is get one cow while the other one, the other person on the horse is like in the middle of where the figure eight is. Um, they're keeping all the other cows from going in there because you got to take one cow. So, like, say you start number five. Yeah. Well, the one guy on the horse goes over there and tries to pull out number five by himself, you know, yeah, yeah. and just by taking the horse. Like so much fun. Yeah, just by taking the horse He's and pushing them over there. Okay, so there's no them, like the, the there's no rope, there's no nothing. Yeah. Okay. You're just taking them just by like chasing them around, basically. <laughs> So you chase but them slowly. and you get them just like, well, I mean, it's going to be fast. You're oh, kind of moving fast, you know. But you get that number five. Oh, is it those and guys? And you push them over there into the one side. And then the other person's job is to keep the other cows from going in there because you got to do it in order. Mm. So you start at number five and then you go number six, seven, and so on. Um, until you're done, you circle back around until you get one, two, three, four. And that's how you're supposed to do it. But if they all rush in there and get past the person, then it's just like. Wait, so off, what's the basically. point? Why do they have to go in order? Because that's the hard thing about getting one cow in there and you're trying to keep all the rest of the cows over to the side. So it's like, how is good are you at maneuvering your horse yeah, cause to would, get that cow in? But the, cra the crazy thing, bro, is like those guys are so good on the horse that if, if they didn't have to do them in order, it wouldn't even be a challenge. Yeah, because you're just pushing them all <laughs> out in one spot, you know. Do you, them. do you do this do you go back and still do this at all or um i did it for the first time a couple of years ago it was so much fun and i When wanted to come back and do it again and they weren't doing it or they did it and then i couldn't come out or whatever happened but hopefully i'm gonna go out there and do it oh, again I if there's there's time. extra room we'd love to join i i know love to do It'd be that. so much fun oh yeah because it's I did, a good time i did i did a horseback riding once and then i always knew I would I would like it and it was a it was a few months ago uh, we went uh, to Mexico in Puerto Vallarta and then we did the tour for like a day like a five six five hours. Yeah, it was your first. I was like, hey, you want to go horseback riding? It's his yeah. first time and it was probably one of the most intense horseback five riding hours. Trips we we go do. on top five of five hours. Yeah, on your first time. Yeah, but you were hurting for days after that, weren't you? Ah. Uh. <laughs> worth it. It was, it was a good worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. Man. Yeah. yeah, it was down deep, was deep, deep bridges did, and everything. Did, yeah, we went up a mountain, and uh, and then going back, uh, we went down those crazy little trails, and I was like, like fucking like. You thought you were a cowboy, yeah. didn't you? That dude was <laughs> impressed. That Mexican dude was impressed as uh, yeah. fuck. He was like, this is your first time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> By the end, he's, he's doing full gallop mm, and everything. Yeah. yeah, Showing him how it's done. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then that's exactly what I told her um, before <laughs> before doing the trip. I was like, babe, don't worry. <laughs> Been a cowboy all my life. You're like, babe, I got this. <laughs> don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to go out and do fun things like that too you know like for i don't know how many years probably uh i worked maybe 15 years hard yeah non-stop every day didn't take like barely took any vacations did anything like that and so now i've been able to do that it's been nice but um i mean i was working 18 hour days Sometimes more, but it's a, it's you know? important to have it's it's important to have your your vacation time, and you kind of know like especially if you do, if you work for yourself, if you work by yourself, or if you don't have like this this job that you know you it requires you to have to be there every week, and you only have like three four weeks or whatever. When you when you have to do the work yourself, 
it's it's hard to do the work and then to actually get in there. But then when you when you do and you actually at work all the time, it's it's important also to take time for you and to take time for you know for your family and for for other things that are important to make sure that you have the energy mm-hmm. and then and then the 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 rest kind of thing to See, to actually work. I kind of I kind of disagree a little bit because I'm kind of more like I like to keep going hard, hard, hard. You know, like. Yeah, I'm but like, it makes sense no though. Balance. It, it makes sense though. Balance to me is like I'm, working. My default is I'm a bitch. That's why I can't. <laughs> you better look at that man <laughs> and tell yourself something, man. <laughs> I need the reminder. Man. Uh, I like to go, man. <laughs> like I like to work, and you know, like even like when I'm coming over here from California, like I've got things going on. Like I'm always working, so I'm. I got some rentals over here, so I'm doing construction on those and fixing those up and. Always something going on, you know, and even when I'm over here, I'm working from afar, you know, so that's just my style. And I think, um, you know, if you do that and you do it consistently, I mean, you're going to be successful, but there's entrepreneurs and there's entrepreneurs, you know, so So you can work for somebody, but um, how far can you get, you know, and if you get some kind of bonus structure where the harder you work, the, you know, more you do, the more money you make, then that's one thing. Yeah, but like otherwise, you need to be your own business owner. Yeah, but the at the end of the day, it. It, you can you can still work for for a company, and like and insurance is like that. You sell insurance, like they make a lot of money. I mean, even the people that those are entrepreneurs, and they make a ton of money, and they still work for a company, but they're uh, you know making a lot of money off of like their commission, their bonus structure, whatever yeah. they have. Yeah. And that's worth it, you know, because you can make good money. But even if you have, let's say, even if you have like a certain position, it's not because you have this position now that you cannot, you cannot get better and you cannot improve. And then maybe the boss is actually going to see like, hey, man, uh, we need uh, this, that, this to, to, to be done. And then you're going to take care of it. And then you're going to grow into the company and you can, you're going to take a bigger role. And then if you do that, then that's going to translate with more money, more responsibility, and you're going to be able to grow in the position. Maybe you can grow in the company, but, yeah. but you don't, don't have don't to work. Don't wait, you know, 20, 25 years to figure that out and no, climb of the course, corporate ladder. No, of course, but then... Don't do that. No, because that's too long. <laughs> yeah. That's that's too long, but yeah, then... you're wasting if, a lot of time. Unless yeah. you're doing, like, side hustles all the time. You always got to be doing something on the side. And that's like... When I was talking about cattle sorting, I go over to Texas. I'm looking at real estate at the same time. Like, you got to keep yourself occupied. Compound nice. your schedule all the time. That's why I have um, this uh, gal, Janet, and Kelly. They work for me, and they do so much work for me all the time. And um, I always do? say, hey, fill up my schedule. You know, give me give me a list of things that I need to take care of, you know. So I always compound myself, you know, give myself more stuff to, you know, keep on the ball. Because if you're not, then get a little lost you gotta have that purpose you know so hmm. just keep working all the time <laughs> <laughs> there's no breaks <laughs> break. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you ever listen to dan uh pena yeah uh yeah the old guy yeah well yeah, yeah. and he's got uh qla man that guy's a trip he is so hard. Like, I couldn't take him. If I was with him, our personalities wouldn't mesh, you know. But I think guy's like, multi-billionaire. Um, and he's just, like, hardcore, hardcore every day. But if you watch his YouTube stuff, it's, like, it's just crazy. He's got these classes, and they come in, and they sit in this castle, and they're just, like, he's just, like, berating them the whole time. The guy in the, in the tight three-piece suit, like, yeah, he looks like, yeah, he looks like a fucking botter. Oh, dude. <laughs> he, he's He's hardcore, man, but. He's nonstop, man. I mean, the guy's like 80 years old, I think. No way. Yeah. 78. 78, what? see? Yeah, he's... Uh, he's he doesn't look 78. No he looks like I know. late 60s. That's why, like, you don't quit working and you're going to look like that at his age. You, know? you need to work out, too. Yeah. yeah. That's important. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean... <laughs> the video I sent, fitness, you, I sent you the other day um, of the 68-year-old it, with the football team, like, repping... Mm. 315, 15 times. Dude, at 68. See? Are you crazy? That's awesome. And then the whole team I was like. I love that kind of stuff. It was, it was great. Yeah. Because the energy in that room must have been 
crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta if you surround yourself he, with that kind of energy that dude, all the time, that dude probably you're gonna be nonstop. Yeah, yeah but that dude probably yeah. never goes over ten with that with that uh, well, with that yeah. weight. But, but they, because of the, the energy, guys, man, yeah. because of the guys with like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> pumping them up. <laughs> ah. It was. Yeah. A, it reminded me of when I was playing football, and that was that was the best. Yeah, good time in your life, huh? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's uh, it's crazy how it's never gonna be that again. Why? Because you're. You got to make that happen for yourself in a different way. No, no, no. But right? then, no, no, no. That the 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 thi- the, 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 the thing that I'm talking about is there's. So okay, when when you play when you play football in 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 college, so you that's basically everything you do. You don't you don't have you don't have jobs, you barely go to school because you don't care. Mm-hmm. It's just you play football, mm-hmm. and you you do that with like eighty guys. Twenty you can't stand. So that was just kind of a free time for you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was yeah, it was great. Came out of it, but it, it was just fun. It was fun. It yeah. was it was fun. It was a good part of the life. So if you had to go back and do it again, you would, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah of course. It's a it's a great. Uh, it's a. It's what did you learn most though about football? Discipline. Discipline. That's right. Yeah. That's what I hear because I mean I never played football because um, I didn't do a lot of extra sports. I just surfed, you know. But um, that's what I heard about football. It's like. It's not really teaching you, you know, the game as much as it is teaching you the discipline, you know. Yeah, yeah, because because when um, and the camaraderie too. Yeah, right. That's that's the because talking shit with boys is the the best. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Locker room talk. <laughs> and then there was no camera back then, so yeah, you yeah. didn't have to worry about all that stuff. It was yeah, you didn't have to. No hot mics. I must be crazy right now. Can you imagine. I wouldn't like that growing up with the the phones that we have now. Like, I, I I like how I grew up without the cameras all over the place. Not that I was doing all these bad things. I'm just saying that, you know, like, you just, like, I wouldn't want a camera on me all the time or, yeah. you know, like, the social yeah. media. Like, I wouldn't, you know. Because sometimes it's better to just have the memory. Yeah. It's like those people that, that, that films everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. You know, like on a trip or something. Yeah. I saw the other day we, we were in New York and then there's a lady, she was walking with the But camera. if you're using it like, you know, like monetary kind of stuff. No, I know. That's, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. But then she was walking with the camera like this. She was walking around like this. That's all, that was her view. She was filming the POV of her trip mm-hmm. instead of just living it. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> and then you're never gonna fucking watch that again. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It's like sometimes it's always hard to stop and take a picture because you're enjoying what you're doing. I don't want to stop and kill it, and then oh, let me capture this, you know, in a picture, and it's like <sighs> but drives some, me nuts. Sometimes it's 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 nice to take a photo of like, but just an image. Yeah. Uh, but then you don't take like fucking all the time. Just yeah. live, like live in it a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, the good thing about, like, social media is really you can get out there really, um, like, for monetary type standpoint. You can you can make a lot of money doing that stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. A lot of people don't know. Like, if they don't know what you're doing, then, you know, how are you going to attract all these people, whether it's to come work for you or, you know, what, what you got going on. And that's why, I like, when um, – actually, Grant Cardone kind of taught me this. Um, is is doing newsletters and getting out of there uh, obscurity, getting out of obscurity, right? But um, you know, I use LinkedIn, you know, for my business mostly, and it's just like we put newsletters out. We're telling what we're doing as a company, but I also do a lot of educational stuff on that too. So I'm always like, it's not just about me and uh, strategic building services and SBS and what we're doing. It is, but most of it is like here let me teach the industry of lessons learned and what's you know, the regulation yeah. what is everything yeah. that you how do to, how to do things you right. know and then as i go around in the industry like i'll meet people that are like big time you know contractors and they told me they're like hey we take your newsletter and we use this as an example to teach our people and i'm like wow that's pretty that's cool that's nice you know? and then it makes it worth it because you're like hey i'm doing something good for the industry i'm putting out the company I bet you I'm know. highlighting my people yeah. you know and that's important to do too you know so it's uh 
it's a good thing to do, um, you know, and use that social media so people can see you. And then it brings you work, too. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll bring you work. You know? I bet you never have problem with those contractors that use your, your use your stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what it is is they want to work with us. You yeah, know? they, they do, say, but then hey, you're not going to have problem with them. Yeah, this guy is over here doing all this extra stuff that all these other guys aren't doing. Yeah. And I'm not doing it to make money. I'm just doing it to help the industry. But that's you crazy know? because you make money because... Yeah. You provide all of this value. The work will come. So, yeah. yeah, you're providing value, and people see that. So it's the way to do it, man. That's nice. Yeah. You got to give a lot more than you you want to take. Yeah. And then and then if... if I got uh, a cousin, man. This guy is super wealthy. And, um, you know, he's like the... Um, what, what is his um, thing he always says? You know, the art of living is giving, you know. And uh, that guy gives so much, and he's super, like, a big entrepreneur. I mean, what does he, he do? does really well. He, he just, like, invests in companies, you know. He was, like, one of the front runners in uh, Vivint. And um, he uh, worked directly under Todd Peterson. Todd Peterson was the owner of Vivint. It was a billion-dollar company, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he sold it for a couple billion. What did they do? They do, um, they did like alarm systems, solar, um, door to door sales, you know, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they created this huge business and sold it. Um, I think they sold it to BlackRock and then BlackRock sold it to, I want to say it's like Suncor or something like that, but he invested money in it and then made money, um, from the sale and then took all that money he made and then invested it back into, um, Vivint. And then made a ton of money when they sold it. Uh, <laughs> sold it. So, that's what he does. He, I invest a lot of money belie- with them. He believed you know? in the company so much that he put the money from the sale and he put it back in the company. And then BlackRock sold it again and he ma- he sold it twice. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Made a ton of money. <laughs> that's wild. I mean, yeah, it's wild. And you get around those people. And actually, um, it's such a good thing. They live in Utah. And um, so I'll go out there. He holds big seminars. He just held his first one. And I think, like, I don't know, 2,000 people came to this mm-hmm. thing, you know, and um, it was huge and really good, really, really spiritual, you know, and um, and so it was like, you know, a lot of people really loved it, and, uh, it was, you know, he had good speakers up there. Todd Peterson was one, and, I mean, they had all kinds of people there, but um, Is he he's just taking that. And, yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be an annual thing. Nice. I'll invite you guys next time. Yeah, let's yeah. do let's do it. Yeah. Or yeah, and you could put it up uh, on the podcast too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I booked uh, uh, Ryan Surhan. He's in Miami. Uh, I think at the end of September. I booked it earlier today. Oh, cool. Yeah, Good. wanted to check it out. Yeah, and um, I mean they they have an investment firm. It's called Sandlot, and um, so I've, I've you know done some deals with him. You know they do a lot of big real estate deals, um, but they'll do all kinds of stuff. You know it's just like are they looking for uh, real estate in Florida? Um, well, mostly the ones that they've done is people that they've worked with before. Yeah. And so in Arizona, um, I did a deal with them, and uh, they like bought up all this farmland, and so they're going to take that farmland, parcel it all out, rezone it. And then sell it to, you know, the Lennars or the KB Homes or whoever's going to come in and then develop all the residential homes. Then they're going to go vertical and then create all the, you know, grocery stores and all the supporting stuff that, you know, you need. And that's where you make your money. It's a long-term investment, so. How, how hard it is to, to, rezone, to rezone farmland here? Because in, in, um, in, in Quebec, it's almost impossible. Yeah, they, they make it impossible, right? But over there, like, th- they're, like, fifth-generation, like, developers. And so they've been doing it. They know everybody, you know. And so when they go and buy, you know, property for, you know, super cheap, um, and they also have water rights over there for that property that they did. So when they go and buy it super cheap, they can easily get it rezoned because they know all the politicians and everybody in the building departments and they make it happen because they're fifth generation, you know, doing it. So but maybe, maybe they know like what, 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 like which land is, has the best um, possibility to get, to get rezoned because it's not fully used. So it could be used better yeah. um, as uh, because at the end of the day, we need, we, if we grow, we yeah, need, the we viability, space, we feasibility buildings. study that they do. I mean, yeah, they're looking at the long, the long run. And really, I think the water rights were one of the biggest things because some of the other areas that other developers were doing, 
didn't have the water rights, you know, and these guys have the water rights. And so I think that's kind of what it made, you know, made it good for me to invest in because I'm like, all right, if they got all the water there, then, you know, that area, that whole area is going to be successful. Hmm. So, and plus they're buying the land super cheap and you're going to make it like Arizona is like booming right now. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the influx of people coming there. And it's just like, you know, where, where are they from? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny that every, everyone that moves here is from New York, and everyone that moves like to Texas and and, and Arizona and, and or, or Utah or Nevada or, or from California. Oh yeah, well I mean, you know, a lot of New York people, even when I was young, they're coming down here all the time. Yeah, but they were coming for vacation. Yeah, where they own places homes, and yeah, yeah. yeah, second homes. Yeah, and then, I mean, you got a lot of California. You got a ton of people moving to Florida. And I was trying to um, buy in Tampa. It was impossible. Like, I couldn't even get a place over yeah. there. No, Tampa I was bidding it, and it was like, you know, $100,000 over asking price, and somebody else would get it. And I'm like, okay, who who is buying all this, <laughs> you know? It, it had to be big companies. It was, it was the Black Rocks, you know, or the Vanguards they, or whoever. They bought a ton of homes. Mm-hmm. They're going to make this a renter nation. It's going to be a renter nation. So get your rental properties now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But have you ha- did, have you heard that um, uh, I think BlackRock, uh, Blackstone, and there's a couple of like um, hedge funds like this, they, c- they own a uh, stake in like 80% of the, the Fortune 500 business? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They're, they're running most of everything. <laughs> here <laughs> they're the basically <laughs> they're basically they have um, a lot of pull holding everyone by the balls yeah <laughs> it's true it's true yeah because they're they're major, major, majority owner or shareholder in all of those companies hey if i built up something like that and you know created a big you know real estate package i would sell it to them <laughs> yeah it's messed that's, up, that's the it? thing that's the thing <laughs> they were they were so good at their job that They, they 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 started to amass so so much assets, so much so much money, so much power, so much everything, that they ended up like controlling everything, like almost everything. Well, didn't they just cut a d- big deal with Ukraine? Yeah, because they wanted to rebuild it. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably why they. They're gonna go rebuild it over there. That's probably why the war is still going on. Yeah, <laughs> you can go deep in that rabbit hole if you want to. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, but it's crazy. It, it, It's crazy that nobody's talking about just making a deal with uh, to end this. Oh, I know. Well, because it's beneficial to um, all the politicians' pockets. I mean, it's money laundering at its finest. And yeah, there's a lot of people that were confused about, you know, what's really going on. And I'm not saying that it's, you know, not bad and people are dying. That's, you know, one thing. It's horrible. Um, it is horrible. But it's, it's war. The Yeah, the people That's over here that it. aren't ending it and <laughs> just, like, feeding and funneling money over there. Um, you know, and they talked about that in a debate last night, Mike Pence. I mean, I, I, I could care less about that guy, honestly. Um, but he was over there talking about, you know, oh, well, we want to fight the war over there so it's not on our own soil. And, you know, we're going to keep funding them. And it's like, you guys are just lining your pockets for you know all your special interests, your donors. Everything else, they're just making money off of it. And um, do they really care about the war? I mean, I don't know what's in their head, but it doesn't make any sense to me while we're pu- um, pushing so much money over there. And you look at Lahaina, they're getting like $700 for um, each family, you know, and that's yeah. it. It's like, <laughs> talk about America well, last. Well, well, they just approved the... Uh, Uh, ten, like tens of billions uh, to, to, to give to someone else. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It, it's so backward. And mm. do, like, do it's you all on, on on purpose? What they're doing? Yeah, it yeah. seems it seems more and more that there's um, there's people that are are in position of power that are enabling corruption, and then um, and then there's there's a few that are like, hey man, is it, that doesn't look white. That does that doesn't look right. Mm-hmm. It seems this is, this is fishy. This is fishy. This is bullshit. And then all of these people that are like trying to to cancel uh, to arrest Trump. I don't. I don't know. I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But like, it seems to be all of those charges that are are the same thing. Yeah, I mean that's 
a thousand percent election interference. I mean, it's so obvious what they're doing. And I think uh, most of America knows that too. You know, I mean, give me a break. Look what, you know, Hillary Clinton and the 30,000 emails and the crrushed up Blackberry and all that stuff. I mean, well, and just, what just happens look there? At, Nothing. Just Nothing look at Hunter Biden. There. Oh. Just look, just look at Hunter Biden. I mean, it's so obvious. He, he He's... The, the laptop story, the, 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 there, there's documents that are, that are just, uh, that went out um, showing that they, they received like a $20 million payout. Oh, yeah. And what's happening to them right now? Nothing. Nothing. It's disgusting. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about something else. <laughs> it's getting too heated. <laughs> but there's, there's aliens, though. <laughs> the big distraction. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it must be I could care less about aliens, honestly. They come out there and start talking about. It, I was like, <laughs> I don't even want to hear it. Whatever. <laughs> so dumb. It must be real though. We can't be alone. Well, you know, I mean, I'm sure we're not, but it's somewhere we're never gonna see. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Be cool though. <laughs> Go watch some sci-fi movies. <laughs> <laughs> That'll help you out, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So. So. So what's next, man? Well, um, what's next is uh, I'm gonna keep doing this. Um, yeah. I like it. I have. Um, so what's the what's the goal behind um, your your podcast? This is your first podcast. This is the first. Hey. Yay. Not my it's my first podcast. Nice. Yeah, so um, you're going to take this and, you know, talk about different things and more well, general. You got to like a story behind it that you're going to kind of focus on a certain thing. Or Yeah. Um, he just wants to learn how people think and the way that they see things. I, yeah. yeah. I like to. It's I, good to learn how people like that, you know. Yeah. I, I like to. I, I like to see from. Because when you know. When you know. Because. Okay. Let me let me let me explain. I see things my way, mm-hmm. and I think um, my view is is the best because it's mine, mm-hmm. right? That's the first reaction. Then I'm like, okay, like now you're an idiot. Sometimes all you're wrong all the time. Um, you, you're not right on 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 everything. Mm-hmm. So maybe someone else um, sees things differently because of the experience that they had, and you're basically the sum of like. You know, everything that happened, every relationship, uh, everything that you read, every experience that you have, you're basically, you're basically that. That's basically, that's you, mm-hmm. right? Because you add, you learn, you grow, you grow, you grow, and then you, you, you're you right now. Mm-hmm. But this is different for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm wondering if, if not everybody is kind of, like, thinking about, like, oh, my views are, are the... Like the the default setting is my I must be right because I think it I think that way. Yeah, well, it's good to get other people's perspectives, you know, and um, see how they think and you know what drives them and how they became successful, you know. And um, but that's the thing that I'm trying to do, and and because because I I think that first of all I think it's interesting. First of all, maybe I can learn something. Maybe we can have some nice conversation. Maybe we can maybe we can grow because. It's still okay to agree to disagree because even if we if we don't view the same thing, if we're two like nice people, we're genuine. We want to make we want to make it work. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the, the the goal should be to make the shit work to 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 to, to, to get along to, to to you know for for everybody to to, to be better. Mm-hmm. It, that should be the goal. Yeah. Maybe we don't agree on you know how to do it. That's fine. Or right? aliens. Or aliens, but then, you know, if you don't believe in aliens, you can't. It, it's, it must be true. Anyway. <laughs> you have to tell me more about that later, your theory. Because if the, if, the, if the universe is infinite, there's, there's no way we... There's got to be alone. another solar system. There's got to like be ours. someone else. Yeah. We can, we can't but I bet you they look just like us. Maybe. And Maybe you know, it's us. a little dot over here, and then there's a bunch of other ones just like us <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Are we ever going to reach them? <laughs> no. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I highly uh, doubt it, but that's but, just um, me. Yeah, but the goal, the goal is, to, is to kind of try to understand what the person has been, has been through, what their experience um, was, 
And then well, if I think you know a lot of a lot of times the people that um, are really hard workers and are, are successful have a hard life growing up. You know, I mean, you look at these guys. You know, like uh, Manny Koshman. Do you know that guy? Yeah. You follow him, the real He's, estate guy. Yeah, He's yeah. from Iran. And uh, they came over here. His family came over here when he was that like dude 14. is bawling out of control. <laughs> Hard worker. He, oh, he yeah. had the drive because he had nothing. Yeah. When you give your kids too much, sometimes that's not a good thing. You know. No, it's not a good thing. You got to teach them some structure, and you have to uh, make a hard worker out of them. You know. And uh, if they don't have that, and everything just comes easy then you're not going to have that drive because everything was handed to you already. And I think that was some of my drive is like, I got handed nothing, you know, everything was like, you work for what you want, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, I took that and, you know, ran with it, you know, later on because who, who's going to give me all this stuff? Nobody's going to give it to you, yeah. you know? But you the, do it yourself. The thing that you should, that you, maybe you should do with your kid um, is, is um, instead of giving them what you didn't have when you didn't have anything it, it maybe it, it would be better to um, actually teach them the lesson that they need to learn mm -hmm. in order to be successful yeah. instead of just giving um, everything for free because if you try to teach them the lesson then they're going to be more equipped and then they're not going to have to fail so much and they're just going to be better mm -hmm. um, but then you're not going to make a fucking entitled brat out of your kids yeah but You know, the one thing I've kind of learned, and, you know, I I have um, two boys that are my bonus boys, I call them. Um, they're my, my stepkids. And, okay. uh, you know, and I have twin girls. They're 12 years old, 12 years old now. And my boys are um, 23 and 20. Um, and, you know, I try to explain those kind of things to them, you know, and say, hey, look, this is how it is, and this is what you got to do to get to where you want to be. And they, they almost don't um, comprehend it at the time, you know, until they have to go out there and do it themselves. And once they go out there and do it themselves, then it's a different story. And then they're like, oh, this is what he meant. But that's, he the, cool, that, that's the cool thing, you know? because, because if, you, if, you, if you do it right, they're, go, they're going to be able to access the inf this information when they're going to live the difficulties, mm -hmm. and then they're going to be able to figure it out themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to kind of have that, you know, um, at least in some regard. I mean, it's, I don't know how many people come successful with, um, you know, just everything handed to them, unless that's just, they got a silver spoon for the rest of their life, you know. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have that, so it's like, all right, how, how am I going to go out there and, and make my money, you know. Yeah. Who's got my money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Grant it's, Cardone, it's, right? Well, it's, it's true. It's always someone else. Yeah, and so you got to figure out, like, you know, what you like and what you love to do, and can you do that every day because you love it, you know? Um, that's the discipline. Then you get the discipline in there, and you got to have then, that discipline to keep going. Okay, let me push back on this a little bit. All right. Because um, I don't think you have to love what you do at first to apply yourself and do it. Oh, and I agree. And, and then and then when you actually do it right, when you actually put in the effort, mm -hmm. you're going to like it more. Yeah. Well, I mean, anything can grow on you, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Once you start to become successful and make money, because that's what you're in it for, right? And you're making money, then you're going to like it more. Yeah. Right? That's true. Maybe you don't like it at first because it's Because tough. you suck. Because when you start something, you <laughs> suck. You're not That's good true. at it. That's true. That's true. You got to get that experience. I, when I started playing football, when I was like, you sucked. Sucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then I became okay at it, uh -huh. and I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> with the, like that's with everything, right? Yeah. You know, like golf. I never played golf growing up. I sucked so bad at it. Like I was really bad at it, and then. Once you start playing more and once you start getting good, then it makes you come back because you're like, oh, I just had a, you know, had a good swing there. That and game is so addictive, though. It's, it's fun. I like it now, you know. But it takes practice. And What do you like about it? Well, I like it because it's, it's really a mind game, too, you know. You've got to be able to set it up. And sometimes hitting the longest shot isn't the, the right way to do it, you know. You got to be strategic about it, and um, you got to think about your next, you know, your next swing. So, 
it's like maybe the 150 yard off of off of the tee is the way to do it instead of trying to hit the you know 300 yard out there because you know it just depends on how that hole works mm. so strategy and, and challenge yeah it's a lot of strategy but the crazy thing is you have to you have to be perfect or you have to do it every time because if you if you're not then you can lose so many strikes um in uh, you know if you lose focus or whatever it can to get that ball in the hole it could be like three and then or it could be 12 yeah <laughs> It happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was fun though. Yeah, fun I don't, game. I don't fuck with it too much. A lot of deals go down on the golf course too, you know. So I know. And the, in in my industry too, like the only reason I started playing is because all the hospital foundations are like, "Hey, sign up for our tournament," you know. And you're working for them, and you're like, "Okay, <laughs> I'll do it." I guess I gotta go to gotta buy at this. the foursome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah go out there and play but i mean you go out there and like you know you get talking with people and it's it's good you know you get to know more on a personal level and that's actually what our industry does a lot you know we actually go out there and um they do a lot of um functions outside of work to try to get people yeah. to know each other outside of the job and get to know them and then you're like oh, okay you're a real person you're not just that person I argue That's, with every yeah, day. Yeah, it's true. You know? then, then that makes a big difference in your yeah. success overall. Team building. It, it does, because the only time I play golf is, is because I go I go to an event with, mm -hmm. with work people. Um, in June, uh, we had uh, we had a tournament um, with the charity I work with in Canada, and, and um, you know, everyone that, that, that came was clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good PR. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were real estate clients. Yeah, yeah. And it was great because we got the chat and we got to connect a little bit more. And then when you build the trust, when you build a relationship with the with the with the guy, it, it gets easier to do uh, to do your job. It gets easier to trust the to trust the guy. You, you know a little bit of the character. It's it's uh it's it's quicker to judge a person too. Like sometimes you're, you're gonna be like, nah, I don't want to work with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Or you can take him out of the ranch and uh, do some. That's why you don't want to suck too bad when you go out there. Exactly. Then they're gonna be like, I can't take this guy anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you better go practice. That's true. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing. Like, um, you know, we did Loma Linda University Medical Center, and that was a, a two. Um, it was like a one point two billion dollar hospital. Holy you know? shit! Sixteen stories, um, base isolated, viscous dampers is most unique hospital they've built in anywhere they say right um so not just california but it um it sat on uh i think it was like 102 base isolators we had What's about that? um base isolators is uh it was a triple friction um pendulum base isolator and so you have basically a moat around the whole hospital and it's for earthquakes so the theory is is make it easy is that it sits on these base isolators and they are they'll move, but your hospital stays still. So the earth moves. The moat is the the circle. The moat is like um, it's basically big retaining walls that go right, around around the around the building. Around the building, like with and the, the castles. And yeah, and the, but it's nice. no water, of course. <laughs> the there's hospital no, sits inside. There's no of crocodiles. It. <laughs> no crocodiles. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a Florida thing. That's actually. where that's where my head went. <laughs> when you said what? I was like, oh, is that it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's all, you know, retaining walls basically all the way around. And um, so it sits on these base isolators. So when you have an earthquake event, then the earth's moving and shaking. And these things are absorbing. The they're absorbing it. Right, exactly. And then the viscous dampers are actually dampening the movement. So they're slowing it down so you can kind of keep control of the building um so it was super unique um they built it from all around the world actually so we we're in germany they're fabricating steel over there cause no way the plate was so thick and it was like you know five five inches thick they wouldn't even fabricate it over here so we went to germany we went to uh, japan um they fabricated all the brbs um over there so what's, what's brbs it's a buckling restraint braces and so that's um they're kind of they take up the the horizontal movement of the building, you know, to kind of distribute say, all of that. Yeah, yeah, kind of layman's terms to make sure um, the building moves. Um, it, it kind of it stiffens it up horizontally, 
And so, like, you'll see all the columns and the beams, and then you see these braces that are diagonal. Yeah. And that kind of holds it from the movement, you know. Oh, okay, so you don't want a building to move that much. Well, you got to have some flexibility in the... Like, building. same idea with, like, if you tense up in, like, a no, car I, or something, it's right. the same idea. Yeah, because yeah. I thought... Then I you're thought actually more hurt. likely to get way more hurt if you... If you yeah. loosened up, it wouldn't be so bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because because so. skyscrapers, um, they have to move a little bit because they would break. Right, right. You know? Yeah, they'll have some movement in them. Yeah, I so. thought it was the same thing. Yeah, it's it's similar, but you still have to have some stiffness in the building too. Mm. Um, and the viscous dampers, those are like a big shock. It's like a shock absorber. So when you look at it, it's like they had them up to um, two foot in diameter, and um, they have fluid inside them. That's the viscous damper, and they'll they'll move in and out. Just like a, um, you know, a shock would, and so that that kind of keeps some movement in the building, but it also slows it down, so it's not too much movement. So they'll do that a lot in tall buildings, and they'll put these dampers like up high, you know, up up high on the you know whatever, fiftieth floor, eightieth floor, or whatever it is. So that uh, that also helps with wind, you know. So they kind of slow it down a little bit. How? Because when it's Really Same windy, idea, yeah. You have a tall building, yeah, and you get a lot of high winds up high. Yeah, at the top there's going to be uh, the the holes to let it to yeah. let the wind goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's also taken into account too. So, um, great great project to be a part of. So it was super unique. Wow. Um, but uh, we worked on that job for seven years. Holy shit! Yeah, it was a seven year project. How long are most of your projects? Um, it depends. I mean, we do remodels when we do new construction. Um, we're doing, uh, um, Cedars Marina del Rey right now. And that's in, um, you know, right over on the coast. And, uh, it's a $750 million project, I think nine stories. So, um, residential, no, it's all, hospital. Oh, it's a hospital. Yeah. Hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I thought you, you were, you said you were doing, uh, uh, some sort of uh, other projects, or, or maybe I, I misheard. So um, with the inspection business, we just do um, hospitals, skilled nursing facilities. Um, we could do prisons, but I don't do that a lot. I bid on them sometimes, but I haven't done any of them. Um, but uh, it's all it's mainly all hospitals and skilled nursing facilities, you know, um, all up and down the state. So we're in San Diego. We're doing uh, Scripps Hospital um, down there. That's a $400 million project. And we're all the way up in Eureka, too. We're doing a 12,000-square-foot. It's about a, uh, I don't know, $14 million project. And then on um, on the the biggest project, on the $1.6 billion, how... how big is the inspection in, in that budget, in the in the construction budget? Um, we were actually, like, uh, I don't know, 1%, 1 you know? And then we had special inspectors... Um, too, that also was part of our inspection, but not our company. That was a different company that does that. Um, they actually, they build more money than we did. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, they made out pretty good on that project. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's very small compared to the overall. I yeah, mean, of course, because yeah. you can't have the inspectors taking 20% of the uh, the whole project. Yeah, yeah, it's not like do that. Do you do work. anything international yet, or would you... No, I mean, we go international when they're doing, like, the fabrication mm -hmm. for the building. But um, it's, it's California that regulates Focused. that. Like, I couldn't come over here to Florida and do the same thing. They don't regulate it the same. Yeah. They have ACA here in Florida. But they only have, like, a few inspectors that go around and, what's and the do that. What's the reason the, um, it's not regulated the same? Uh, earthquakes. Right. And then, you know, like I said, when you got the earthquakes and then they kind of, like, brought everything into it. So the med gas, the plumbing, the mechanical, the architectural components, we look at all that stuff. So It's like a bunker hospital. Yeah, because, you know, when you um, have a major event like that, where are you going to go? Everyone you know, goes to a hospital. Everybody's got to go to a hospital. But don't you, yeah. do, do you, do you they think... they got to sustain, you know. Do you think uh, you, you, ha you, you had uh, to have the regulation to be able to, to build it efficiently and to make it work? Or... Do you think maybe that the market, uh, all of the players could have adjust and, and, and be like, okay, like there's, you know, there's earthquake. Let's just build the thing so, uh, so it stands. Do you like, you do have you to have strong regulation within construction or you're going to have contractors coming out building whatever yeah. but I, they want and just billing whatever they want to make as much as they possibly can. Right. Well, 
right. you know, and they, they um, you know, if you don't have that kind of oversight. Checks and balances. Yeah, the exactly. But you still have the liability if you, d you build a faulty building, no? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the contractor does. Yeah, absolutely. so that's what I'm saying. Uh, so it's, this is to prevent the issue, you know? So yeah. it's kind of a, you know, forward um, kind of thinking of, Let's make sure that the buildings are built correctly and per plan and how they were designed and who's overseeing that the whole time. And that's why they created this whole kind of um, OSHPA jurisdiction, HKI jurisdiction that oversees all that. Because when they had it under the city jurisdiction, that's when we had all those failures. And so then we have subsequent um, earthquakes and the ones that had, you know, the inspections and the regulations that they had, they, they fared way better than the ones that didn't. You know? mm. So they have... Some good data on that. And they also, um, you know, create data, too, when um, uh, so they have seismic instrumentation that they'll put in the buildings. And so then that instrumentation, they'll, you know, bore holes down 100 feet in one area and then another 50 feet in another area. And so then they're tracking what the earthquake is doing and then how the building reacted to it. So, Do you guys see more seismic activity in the last couple of years or... I mean, we haven't had a lot of big events. We did have one that was like 5.2 or 5.5 that was up in Ojai just recently. We we did some projects in Ojai, um, and there's no, like, adverse effects to it. So what what does a 5.2 earthquake mean? Like what the, it's just the like magnitude. I, I know it's the magnitudes, but, like, is there, like, standards of uh, how much is going to shake? <laughs> You well, know? it depends. Like, um, the reason why we built it at uh, Loma Linda the way we did is because yeah. they were surrounded by faults. And then they say, okay, well, this fault has the capability of being a 8.2 magnitude. Okay. And so then the, the it's engineers... It's up to nine, is that right? Or what's yeah. the... Is it enough? I can't remember. I, I don't know, like, what the what top the is, but it's is. about nine, I think, somewhere it's around nine. there, right? Um, but they, they'll engineer that to be able to accept that kind of movement right. during that time. And, you know, it's Mother Nature. It's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's fun to, to, to see, like, how we became aware that these things happened. And we were like, oh, man, when that happened, it fucks up everything. <laughs> so we need to adjust. Yeah, and they have, um, you know, they have, like, means, too, to be sustainable for, you know, up to three days after an earthquake event. So they'll have, like, a big domestic water tank. Um, they'll have, like, sewage in uh, injection tanks that are there, generators that are there, you know, with capability of so much fuel. Yeah. Um, you know, 24 hours, and then they expect, you know, trucks to be able to come in and, and feed that. But we they got to be sustainable the whole time while, you know, we had an earthquake event and, You know, people need to come to the hospital and have a functional hospital. So of course, yeah. But with with uh, with those uh, earthquake, like uh, with and and with all of the regulation, all of the construction method, everything that we have, do you still see uh, a lot of buildings that are damaged after after an event like this? Like the yeah, like um, just recently they had a I think it was around a 6.2 earthquake out on the coast up near Eureka, Fortuna. Um, that area and so I went up there and did a site assessment for them and they had the structural engineers go up there as well and they checked it out and um, they have when they build buildings they'll do additions and yeah. so you have expansion joints in between those because you'll have different movement yeah. um, from different foundations and just different engineering so they'll put big expansion joints in between and we saw a lot of cracking of the walls you know but really what it did is it, it did its job you know you have these joints that are there for a reason because you have the movement different movement between the buildings yeah yeah and um and actually you know i, I didn't see any major structural issues on those after 6.2 yeah nice yeah it, it really sustained so it goes up to 10 by the way 10? oh 10 yeah. we were wrong close good job well you just <laughs> no damage after 62 percent power i mean it's, it, that's not even a good thing <laughs> yeah yeah 6.2 is nothing right? 6.2 is nothing <laughs> It's just 62% power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it was good to see that because you'll have um, fire rated assemblies between that too, you know. And then What does that mean? So, like, when you build a building, you have fire ratings between the floors, you know, and it's specific for hospitals. They have So the fire doesn't pass from one floor to the next. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, Each okay, floor yeah. is considered a smoke barrier. And, right. Um, 
and also a fire barrier. And so um, in between that, when you have these joints, you have to have these fire rated blankets that go through there because they need movement. And um, so those need to stay in place, you know, during, because what happens is you have the earthquake and then you have the fire afterwards, you know, it's kind of natural. Um, and so you need to be able to protect in place and it's not evacuating, it's relocating. So you'll have like all this, um, all these patients who need to relocate inside in, the hospital, inside the hospital. So you have smoke barriers and you can only build one smoke barrier up to 22,500 square feet. And so you also oh, that's have not, to... That's not big. No, it's not big. But the next area has to be able to fit all these people in over there. Oh. Plus the people that are in there too. So you have square footage requirements um, based on your smoke barrier and your patients. Yeah. And what so you So you got to fit everybody into... Yeah, to the other space. So that's why they came up with that 22,500 square feet, you know. Because so. of the maximum capacity of the hospital, and then you, you calculate that it takes 22,000, 2,200, or 22,000, yeah. whatever. 500, yeah. And it's based on square footage, based on your, you know, patients. Yeah, because you know, like, okay, I can put 10 per 100 square footage, and then you, you do the math with the, the maximum capacity of the building. And then right. you're like, okay, this is how big... Everything turned to shit. Everybody yeah. go there. So Maybe. if you have a fire in that one area, you should be able to relocate everybody into the next area where the smoke barriers are and then contain that area in place. But you're always fully sprinkler too, most of the time. Yeah. I mean, it's the older buildings that aren't always, but for the most part, pretty much every hospital is fully sprinkler. Well, yeah, you have to. Yeah, but you still have some that aren't fully sprinkler. The old you know? ones? Yeah, the old ones. What happened then? Well, then they make you have a, you know, you have a fire alarm system too. Yeah. So that's kind of like a secondary. Isn't there, isn't there a regulation to have all of the hospitals install sprinkler by, by what date? Because I know they did that for, uh, for uh, retirement homes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that Ansel systems too in your kitchens, you know, those used to be like, you know, fire sprinkler. And then you got to have a UL 300 system. Yeah. So they have cutoff dates for all that, just like seismic, you know. Um, I was just talking with uh, Oshpod today, a guy from up in Sacramento. And um, we have AB, it's Assembly Bill 2190. And um, you have to start um, upgrading your, your SPC rating, a structural performance category rating. Um, like, say, if you're SBC 1, which is the lowest, I mean, you got to go up to SBC 2 by this date, SBC 3 by this date. And so they give you requirements that you have to upgrade um, structurally and then also fire life safety as well, too, you know. So kind of like um, you have the old, you know, um, standard response fire sprinkler heads. Those have to be upgraded to quick response. But if they're tested, then you can leave them in place um, if they work correctly. If yeah. not, then you're putting in quick response heads. That was mostly geared for skilled nursing facilities. So they have all kind of timelines, regulations, different dates for all these kind of activities. And they got to give the hospitals time to get the money, fund it, get the plans, and do all that. So it's years in the making. Mm. Yeah. What's the... What's the biggest problem that you can that you see on 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 an inspection site? Um, as far as doing the inspections, like or like the most common like mistake of the the contractor or whatever like that you see. Oh, um, I mean, it's not not following the drawings, um, and, and then sometimes with all the plan checks that they do, I mean, they're six months doing the plan check, and then they'll have back check. We'll have another back check sometimes, just depends on the quality of the drawings. Um, and then sometimes there's still mistakes, you know. And so you get that in the field, and you're saying, hey, follow the drawings. Well, actually, the drawings are wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, we got to do a change make order. Mistakes. Yeah. You make it mistakes. happens. Yeah. It's never, so, it's never perfect. That's right. And so <laughs> the thing about it is, is that you can't build off of the drawings um, if they're wrong, you know. Yeah. And so then it's like, it's kind of like a catch-22. Okay, build per the drawings. Wait, no, these drawings are wrong. So um, <laughs> we need to change that's that why, first. That's why you need to have competent jo competent people at their jobs. Yeah. Because then you see the drawings, you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it, it happens a lot, actually. Of course. And, um, and you got you to gotta be like, part of our job is to kind of look ahead on those things. So we look for constructability and inspectability and minimum code, too. So... A lot of times you'll get down to the like finite details of 
you know, your head of wall systems is a fire rated head of wall systems. Well, what's the building movement? It's a half inch. Maybe yeah. you might have half inch movement. Well, maybe your system accounts for a half inch, but it's only got, you know, a quarter inch of compression that it allows. So then you can't use that head of wall system, but they put it on the drawing. So it must be right. Right. Well, no, it doesn't give you your half inch that yeah, you field need, conditions you know, are so there's all these little things that it's just this finite details that you really got to mm -hmm. pay attention to and you're not going to know it until you experience it, you know? Yeah. So, and you actually see the, the thing because at some point we have to have the mistake made to know like, okay, this, this, this should happen when we, when we do this or right. we don't check this. Right. So like our regulations, we have a uh, fire life safety officers as a fire marshal. We have a compliance officer and he kind of does the overall, a lot of the architectural MEP things. And then we have a district structural engineer, and that's the DSC. It's a lot of acronyms. It's government, right? Yeah. Um, and they do all the structural. So we have those guys that we have to basically answer to. They come out there and they say, okay, well, show me this detail right here, and how did you inspect it? And you got to be able to produce that, you know? So it's a lot of, like, high tension when they come out because, you know, you got to be on your A game and, you know, know what you're talking about <laughs> and make sure that you're looking at things because the contractor is just going to go. And yeah. if you can't keep up, then you're going to be in trouble, you know, and you got to document like crazy. That's why you need to know your shit. Yeah, you got to know your shit be because it's like, you yeah, you got to be fast and you got to keep moving and if you fall behind, then you're in trouble. So, you know, and they'll, they'll, they'll see that, you know, the DSE, the district structural engineer, super smart guys. <laughs> so you got to like know your stuff, you know. So are you saying that uh, building hospital is kind of hard? It's difficult. It's <laughs> it's the um, upper echelon, upper class type of construction. And, and you'll see it too with the big contractors. They have the guys that are experienced too, and that helps out. You know, yeah. these companies have been doing it a long time, and they know what they're doing. And that, that makes it a lot easier. When you get into the skilled nursing facilities, you get a lot of these residential contractors. They come in there, and they just like you just fuck up everything. hack everything up. And then you're just like, oh, it's a mess. And it takes forever to get it done, you know, so... You got to like pick and choose your jobs on what's in, you know, important for you to, you know, you want to <laughs> work for. <laughs> so. And what's the name of the company? Uh, strategic Building Services. Do you have a website? I do. Strategic-building.com. Nice. Yeah. And what's the best, uh, the best way to contact you? Like um, uh, if you want, can you build, can you build a hospital privately in, in you know, that you're going to be able to, to inspect them? Or yeah. just a gov it's just government contract? That's well, it's like private owners, you know, like, you know, um, the Cedar sinais or the Providences or, you know, the Kaisers of the world. So um, we do inspections for all of those companies. And so if you're an owner out there looking for a good inspection team, SVS is your guy. Nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or gal. Yeah, both. <laughs> so what's what's next for, for you? Um, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing with my inspection company. You know, I've built up, I've got, you know, a little over 30 inspectors that work for me. I've got 10 support staff. Um, so we're about 40 people. Um, we're growing and then we kind of shrink up depending on the jobs, you know, so, um, but right now we're growing, we're hiring more people, um, really busy, you got big, you know, what we call tower projects going on. Um, and they're, you know, from 300 million to... 1.2 billion dollars is what we're working on so you know big high profile a lot of politics involved um so next thing is i'm going to take you know what i'm doing there and uh I've got a couple other companies that i've created from that too i have sbs labs and sbs labs is um kind of more of my educational side and that's what i put out my newsletters and things like that um, and then I also have a bachelor properties and that's what I do for, um, my residential kind of side of real estate investments and or things fun. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Never um, slowing down. Yeah. And then we also do some construction management too. So nice. that's, uh, for residential or commercial? Uh, hospitals. Yeah. Oh, for hospitals still. Yeah. So, um, we do a little bit of that, but we're not the inspector when we do that. We do, you know, construction management or um, kind of like a project manager type position. And that's kind of like a little bit of a different department. So we're not doing inspections when we do that. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we're going to continue to grow that and um, continue to build up real estate. And that's the plan. That's the goal. Well, that's a good way to wrap this up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thanks, Tyler. Hey, thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. All right.